All right, all right, family, and we are live. Thank you for your, oh, let me move this closer, my Buddha. Hey, 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 Doc, before I introduce you, uh, Dr. Valentine said this might be, he was looking at my statue and I was like, um, you can see my statue? He was like, I was like, this the Buddha. And he was like, he think that's Shiva. He got to see it up close, but he said he think, I don't know if you know a, a lot about Shiva. I is think Shiva Sh is like, considered like the female buddha i think that's no that's shakti shakti is the female um, oh well. but i don't know i'm just saying i thought maybe you might have. okay all right all right if y'all in the chat you know i don't know if buddha has these circles on his hands and stuff like that or is that something connected with shiva but i figure i'm gonna ask around and see what's going on but um all right family give me uh let me um get to a quick commercial we're gonna have a great show tonight all right, and um, we'll be right back. I'm bringing <coughs> my guest. Y'all can see who's in the building. Uh, we'll be right back in one minute, family. Be right back. Sometimes I wake up in the morning feeling stressed. Sometimes I wake up feeling like I never slept. Sometimes I don't want to wake up because I'm depressed. But today when I woke up, I felt blessed. Yes, I'm thankful I could breathe. Thankful for the breath. Thankful for the heart beating in my chest. Superman S. I fell in love with life. Not afraid of death. Fell in love with life. Fell in love with sex. And I confess, I love my gold. Melanated flesh. It absorbs. It protects like a bulletproof vest. I kill all my demons and then I ask who's next. I'm the son of Osiris, I'm coming for the suit tax Suplex, God is blood, God is great I thank him for the food on my plate I just ate mashed potatoes and steak mm -hmm. Victory is sweet, come get a taste The flavor when your air is baked Mac with the base Been broke, can't break Got money in the bank Every day someone dies Someone's born, get a case Set a date, get a suit, get a tie Get a date, God is always on time Never late, celebrate, get in shape Meditate, levitate, elevate Men destroy, men create, well women and men straight in the sound I make emanates my life and the song I sing celebrates my life celebrate your life celebrate your life celebrate today celebrate tonight celebrate your life celebrate your life everything was dark God invented life everybody celebrate your life celebrate your life celebrate today celebrate tonight Accepted all my wrongs, celebrate the right When I die, celebrate my death, see what heaven's got I feel glorious, victorious, the metal dangle on my All right, all right, family As we continue on in 2024 and we're all celebrating our lives And celebration can be celebrating the smallest thing This gentleman right here has talked about that on previous shows I want to welcome back to the platform Without further ado, the one, the only My alien brother from another galaxy, Dr. B. Serious. Welcome back, Doc. Hey, man. It's good to be here, man. It's a, it's a beautiful time. Excellent timing. Indeed. The timing indeed. is right on the one. Oh, oh, man. Excellent. Excellent. I think this is the... Is this the first time you've been here since the new year, or you've been here... Um, I'm not I'm not sure. I think you I might, might have been here. Yeah, you might have been here one one other time. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, oh, anyway. we talked about the Maherta. Right, right, okay, right, 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 okay, yes, right, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was a that was a powerful, impactful show, and I'm gonna tell you, Doctor B. Um, since that time period, that week, uh, things haven't been the same for me. I've elevated in certain areas. I've uh, I've graduated to a new level. I would say, like, that's the best way I could say it, Doctor B. Is uh, around that time when you and Rod Hayes was talking about the ending of the Kali Yuga, I've have graduated to a new level of consciousness. And I am definitely, definitely thankful for that, Doc. Definitely thankful for that, for that information. Well, you know, we all, actually, everything under the sun mm. and everything in the solar system has actually elevated and changed. Excellent. It's just that, you know, some people are more sensitive to the shift and the change and more aware mm -hmm. of the change. And nothing is staying the same. We're always changing. But what has happened now, I mean, even in, in, in Dr. B's world, it's, mm. it's a, if you... If I broke it down, what has happened Ooh. just in the last month? I mean, the opportunities, business opportunities, personal yeah. opportunities. Excellent. You know, it's it's just deep, man. It's just Excellent. but we have to be open and allow change and expect right. it. We're gonna get into that in just a few. 
Oh yeah, a wonderful show. Um, a couple of announcements tonight. Wonderful show we got planned for tonight. Uh, Doctor B, very interesting title: the butterfly effect, uh, avoiding spiritual narcissism, narcissism. And um, to start out with, Doc, that is a very important topic. Has it been talked about that much in terms of spiritual narcissism? We'll talk about narcissism. Or we'll just talk about egomaniacs or something like that in the spiritual community. But that as a as a phrase, spiritual narcissism, um, as we all attempt to ascend, ascension, as we all raise our consciousness, it's a tricky game. Um, we have encounters with entities and energies, and they may start to tell us things, and we may start to believe that we're the greatest thing since sliced bread, or we may go to a we may go down the wrong path along the way, Dr. B. And it's not a pretty sight. It's not a pretty sight at all, Dr. B. And um, I want everybody to avoid going down that path as they um, raise their consciousness, uh, Dr. B. Because sometimes you can never return from that path. It's such a, a wrong turn. You don't get back on the road. And I've seen it happen. So let's start out this conversation with what exactly do you feel is, you know, the spiritual community is growing so immensely because all the information is on the internet. I want the family to be warned about spiritual narcissism and you could tell them what it is and what can they do to prevent from getting trapped in this, uh, this frequency of spiritual narcissism, uh, Dr. B. I think that we have to be careful because the ego mm -hmm. is a very interesting creature. Mm. And sometimes when we learn new information, Mm -hmm. we desire for everybody to know what we just learned. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we go tell it on the mountain. We're telling everybody. I remember when I first stopped eating, you know, uh, chicken. Mm -hmm. And I was the chicken master, man. I used to know how to make chicken in every kind of way you could think of, man. I was, oh, man. Like, and I, and I now was going to all the family outings talking mm -hmm. about the chicken, talking about what people were eating. Do you know right. what you're eating? Do you know the chickens do? Blah, blah, blah. And they eat maggots and blah, blah, blah. People were just like blown away. And I had become like a, a, a zealot, almost like a religious zealot, oh, forcing man. my opinion on others to the point where I was eroding the vibration and the energy of the space mm. with my seemingly positive information. Mm -hmm. I was actually spreading fear and anger and worry and all these things into the environment. Wow. I wow. felt that what I what I knew about food, what I knew about life, everybody should know. Yeah. Ask for permission. I didn't ask anybody if they wanted and desired to know. My ego said, I'm telling everybody. Mm. I've always been a kind of a revolutionary. So I put yeah. on and I was marching and I became mm. like the, 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 the vegan police for a while. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Damn. I, I, and it just got to this point where it got ridiculous until. You know, an, an elder sat me down and said, bro, what, what's going on? I said, well, you know, the meat is killing people. He says, you're killing people. Ooh. Bro, no, I, I'm not killing people. Ooh. You are. You're destroying people's vibration. Ooh. You're destroying their, their, their peace and their love and their harmony. You're Damn. coming in. You're doing more to the environment than what they're eating is doing. Mm. Man, that's deep. Because your ego... Mm -hmm. says that you are now the, 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 the knowledge god. You're the king of food, and you just mm -hmm. learned something 15 minutes ago, and now you want everybody to change their life because you've changed yours. Mm -hmm. And your attitude is terrible. Mm -hmm. Your approach is terrible. Nobody asked you, but you feel because of what you've learned, everybody should learn this. This mm -hmm. is what happens when a lot of people, quote unquote, come into what we call consciousness, mm -hmm. which is even a funny word because you're always, if you're awake, you're conscious. <laughs> it sounds cool. You know, oh, he's conscious mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Even the word spiritual, you couldn't be alive unless you were spiritual. But we think spiritual means that, you know, you're positive, you're talking soft or you're talking about some deep stuff. That's not technically what spiritualism is. Spiritual means to be spiritual. To be spiraling, which is what your body and your energetic field is always doing. We live in a spiral universe on a, spi a planet that's spiraling around the sun. So some of these terms get real commercial and they get mm -hmm. labely and brandy. 
Mm -hmm. But we should be careful, especially at this time. And the reason why is because, and you know, some folks will use this one right away. We just came out of the age of deception. Mm -hmm. At least 6,000 years. And let's just say the last 2,000 was where it was the deepest, what they call the age of Pisces. This was the age of deception. Now, what, what happened? Well, we were so far away from the center of the galaxy mm -hmm. that we were not receiving the direct information from the cosmos, right? From the center, from Hanabku, the central sun, that would give us the information to know how to be at our best. Mm -hmm. So we were like devoid of funk. You know what I'm saying? We, we were lost. We were just out in space floating technically. It's what I call the junkyard. And I think in our last you know program, I talked about the junkyard effect. So what happens is people come along with this knowledge that everybody doesn't have. And some of them became leaders. They became prophets and all these different things, right? So now we get to a point where we're out of the age of uh, uh, the age of, of deception. But some of us still have the energy of deception. And we think that what we know and what we have is the true knowledge, it's the best knowledge based on what we're studying. We begin to deceive ourselves and say that this is the facts, this is the truth, when actually almost nothing you're talking about is an actual fact. Most of what we talk about, most of what we know are theories. They're not actual facts. It's not this is the way we should do it. This is what black people do. This is what Africa was about. This was about Egypt. Nobody even really knows what was going on in Egypt. You know, Billy Carson might know the most because I think he's from there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. I'm saying that what we are talking about is references and labels. Mm -hmm. So you went and studied a bunch of references and labels, and now you know this stuff about health and about whatever well-being. And something in you says, I got to go tell everybody and force this down people's throats without them even asking. Mm. Even, even when I do my classes and I workshop my workshops, I always ask for permission. See, mm. people don't even ask for permission. It's the ego. I know what I know. You know what I'm saying? And you think you really know it, but you can't really know it because the only thing you could know is knowledge right now. To not to 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 know means to have knowledge right now in the present. Uh, 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 are you? Let's just stop. Let's slow down for a second. Just because you learned some information, you went to a lecture, you read a book, you heard somebody speak. And it affected you. Does that mean that that is the actual facts and the truth? What is truth? You got to get down to that. Truth is not facts. Truth is what people are pumped up and the whole group of people agree to, which are called memes. A meme is a socially uh, agreed upon idea. A meme. A mime, like a mime, like a person that's, you know, you don't see them. They, they be doing that thing at the park or at the zoo or whatever, you know. Those are memes. Those are ideas that have been placed in people's heads. So I remember I was talking one time and, you know, they, they had this concept about, you know, where all people were from. And we realized that we couldn't be from where they say we're from because we're from everywhere. That would say mm. that that's our beginning when we have no beginning. Right. We've always been. So why do we have to have a start point and an end point? Why do we always have to say that this culture was the best culture? Because right. we keep talking about, you know, superiority and who was supreme and who thinks they're supreme. And then we start acting like we're supreme, you see. And all of a sudden now it becomes diluted. It becomes a, 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 a situation where we're attempting to feel better about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need because we've been through so much oppression, but we have to remember after being oppressed for a certain amount of time, you can easily become the oppressor. The oppressed people become the oppressor or or protect the oppressors. The other that's Stockholm syndrome. Is that right? You come to save the people. They don't want to be saved. They like they love, you know, being in captivity they like their captors. They've got a relationship now with their captors. In fact, they don't remember what it was like to be free. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't remember what it was like to be free. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, when, when you get off the plantation, right, 
you can easily create a plantation in your mind. This is what most people have done. It's a new plantation. And you want to be the big sheep on the plantation. Mm -hmm. So you call yourself, you know, sheep, you know, king, sheep, such and such. You got all this knowledge and you're always running around telling the other sheep what's going on. I'm telling you all the truth where we originally from. We're from sheep planet. We're not from blah, blah, blah. And we pump up all this knowledge, right? We want everybody to know. Mm. There is a difference where if you are coming with an open heart and a loving heart, you're not Mm -hmm. forcing information down people's throats. You may be giving information, offering information in a place like this. People have asked by signing on, by being a member uh, of the Black Magic you know, uh, YouTube channel. They're actually joining and they're asking for information. But a lot of times we're giving out information that we think to be factual and we're pumped up about it and we're forcing it down people's throats. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're doing, you know, I was on a tour many years ago. I did this tour where we were uh, in a a documentary. It was the first, they say it was the first all black uh, natural health documentary. And it was maybe five or six of us all on this documentary together. Some of you know it. And I had to leave the tour because we went on the tour to different cities. And I just noticed how many people who were supposedly talking about health and healing Mm -hmm. were yelling at the audience. Mm. judging, pointing the finger, and actually mean-spirited. Wow. It was angry, man. In fact, we got to Detroit. It was so deep that the people on the stage Mm -hmm. wanted to physically attack one of the other people on the stage, Dr. Africa. They didn't like what he was saying, and he didn't like what they were saying, and it became a whole thing back and forth about who was right and who was wrong. This is right on the stage. Damn, angry vegans? That could oh, be a name of a the, that could be the name of a documentary. Angry vegans. Wow. Well, Good. some vegans are angry because they really want to eat meat and they can't because they've joined into the, the church of veganism. Oh, you, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm a, I, I, I'm a, I gotta take this slow because this this subject that you brought up yeah. is so yeah. important. We're angry a lot of times because we didn't get information or we felt we were lied to or we were deceived. <laughs> So now what that we know it, we have become angry in our production, our, 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 our way of expressing it is in an angry, mean way. Right. Because we feel like sometimes people's language of love is anger and meanness. Ooh. That is their, their language of love. You know, I remember this girlfriend, you know, I had many, many years ago. She was like, well, you've never beat me up or anything. You never slapped me. I was like, well, I would never do that. She says, why not? I'm like, huh, what do you mean? Why not? Well, sometimes a woman needs to be. I'm like, what? You, and I realized born. that this wasn't a relationship <laughs> for me because that's what she knew as love. That's what she knew in her household. You know, right. there was if people weren't getting beat down and if there wasn't a little blood on the floor, it wasn't, it wasn't right. Because right. that's what some people have agreed with when they've been under oppression, they've been under trauma. Once, once you've been under trauma so much, you now are not in trauma, right? Physically, but you can be traumatized. Right. And now you expect trauma or create trauma and every there may be something beautiful, something the greatest situation just popped up. But because Mm -hmm. you have been oppressed and you've been traumatized so much, the saboteur in you will stop you. From actually moving into something that's a great opportunity for you, Mm -hmm. you'll stop yourself because you say, I don't want to fail. I don't want to get beat. I don't want to lose. I don't want to be enslaved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scramble and scuffle the whole thing. So that it doesn't happen, so I can't lose. Mm-hmm. A lot of us can't. A lot of us can't win for losing because we think we're losing. Just think about this. I, I'm not gonna go there because I'm gonna go there when we talk about the butterfly. Right. But I'm gonna say just a little bit. Yeah. Because I, I definitely want to ask you a question real quick about Valentine. But got idea. Okay. okay. This this is real quick. Yeah. Have you noticed how often we say little? Good point. Great point. Why do we keep belittling ourselves? Great point. Little, my little business, my little car, my little house, my little idea. That's my little brother. That's my little sister. But all of y'all grown now. We're grown people. They still little. Yeah. We, We have this thing about measuring things and making them smaller because if we seem too big, 
You, you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes that that's going to cause a, a a wave of energy to make you break out of your box that you're in. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. people have broken out of this box and it's, uh, it's gone crazy. Now everything is big. Everything mm. you're saying, you're loud, you're screaming, you're upset, mm. you're mad. And you're, a lot of our, our, our teachers are angry, angry spirited while they're speaking. Mm. So I, I had to, you know, remove myself. And Dick Gregory talked a lot about this with me, you know, when in, in the 90s where he was like, B, you're, you're, you're so, you know, upset with the people. They can't mm. listen to you. You're just making them more upset. You're affecting people like that with mm. that energy. A lot of us name ourselves something to aspire to be something, or we name ourselves self something because it makes us feel bigger, feel, makes us feel taller or more right. connected or more right. this and more that. We're going to get more into that in just a minute. So just keep that in your mind and go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, just real quick, I want to ask you because I know you're about to go in and um, uh, just an example of I want to know, do you think we're talking about spiritual narcissism, narcissism, and this is very important for, every, for everybody who's on their path and those who's just getting on their path so they won't go down that direction. Do you think, because because of what today represents and uh, in terms of European holidays, do you think uh, criticizing someone for celebrating Valentine's Day is a form of spiritual narcissism? And the reason why I ask that is because every Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's Day, July 4th, all the conscious, not all the conscious folks, but a lot of conscious people get on the internet and start bashing everybody who celebrates the European holidays. So you think that is a form, because at the end of the day, Blue Pill, let me just say this, Blue Pill made a point on Instagram today. He said, does conscious people have a day, a single day where you just single out and celebrate a loved one? If we're going to criticize Valentine's Day, what's our day where we take our lady or you, your ladies take their man and you just show them unconditional love? So he was just he just brought up a good point. But my question is criticizing ones who celebrate Valentine's Day, a form of spiritual narcissism. Dr. B. I think that most of what we've been taught is narcissistic behavior to point fingers, to say they're wrong, they're right. Uh, um. If we look at the roots of many of these holidays, it does get real sketchy where it came from. Mm -hmm. The question is, what does it mean to you? You have to come up with a definition that means something to you. And rather than talk about what is the problem with this day, like you say, create your own. What is the day of love? And why does it have to be one day? Me, yeah. I don't have a, a day to be loving, to be caring. Every day I'm attempting to be more loving and more caring. Even on this program right now, I'm attempting <clears throat> to come with a message of love, of harmony. I'm a musician. It's about the rhythm. It's about the tone. Mm -hmm. it, even it's like me, some music is just yelling at you all the time. And you mm -hmm. listen to that all the time and you, you're yelling. Your music is yelling at you. People is just mad and angry. Mm -hmm. Well, that is a program. That's a construct that was created for the animals on the farm. Keep them okay. agitated, because if you keep the animals agitated, they can never come together and free themselves from the bondage. Mm -hmm. So a day of harmony or a week of harmony. Why can't we have a week? Just like, you know, why do we have Black History Month? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not with Black History Month. I don't celebrate this. I'm not telling you what not to do. I don't do it because that's just to say that there's a month of time where we did some good things. Right. Okay. We we just should be the way we're being all the time and not wait for Valentine's. Right. All not time. wait for, for, for whatever holiday, create your holy day or live in a way where you're in your walk is about whatever your concept is. Your 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 who are you and be mm -hmm. that all the time. Mm -hmm. Is that am I, am I, am I answering the question? I don't know if I'm ever answering. Oh, yeah, no, no, you you well, you definitely answered. I understand that, but my point was. Is it narcissistic to criticize them? I understand what you're saying, but is it a form of narcissism to criticize them? That was the point that was brought up on, on social media. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think that we come from a culture that's been developed by narcissists. So we've taken on some of the energy and ideas and ideals and idols from the narcissist. So if the narcissist seems like the winner, Right. Right. You don't want to be a loser. 
So you start taking on some of the personality traits of what we call the winners. The winners mm -hmm. was narcissist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like people call me all the time and they say, well, Dr. B, uh, what do you think about such and such as herbs and such and such as message? And I say, well, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. I don't, I've never taken their herbs. Well, no, because they say blah, blah, blah. And somebody said that you, you can say what you like about Dr. B. I'm not out here competing. We're not in, we're not, we're not Roman gladiators fighting out here. That's this a, is a big pond. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big pond out here. You understand what I'm saying? They want to get messy. I have, I have <laughs> never competed. Right. I'm not yeah. competing. In fact, you can't do what I do, and I can't do what you do. Nobody mm. does Dr. B better than Dr. B. Indeed. And I got to know that in my head, and I've got to work towards, right, or play towards or gravitate towards being more me and not minding the business of other people and pointing the finger. I don't care what holidays you do. Indeed. I'm not I, I I could say I'm not doing any of those. I have my own days. Each day is a holiday. Each breath is a holiday. Mm -hmm. A holy day with a hole. You got to put that W back on there, too. So it's mm -hmm. holistic. If it's just a whole H O L E, it's a hole and you're falling in it. Holy. Mm -hmm. We got what about holism? Mm -hmm. Whatever we do affects everything. Mm -hmm. So being at the type of person who is you know, always agitating everybody, mm -hmm. trying mm -hmm. to be better, trying to show off, needing to be the, the life of the party, the life of everything. And, you know, your clothes sometimes, the brightest clothes and the most flashy this is it's usually people who have been oppressed that want to show off everything that they have. Mm. Why? It says, look at me. I have something. Especially if you've been, you know, in a situation where your you and your ancestors didn't have much, mm -hmm. which ain't that long because I don't care what you say. When you go back thousands of years, we had it all mm -hmm. for millions of years. We had everything. We were it. Mm -hmm. So now mm -hmm. you feel this. This is how you know a person is oppressed mentally. Because they're always trying to show off and show out mm -hmm. instead of just being who they are authentically. Be the authentic you and your light will shine. You mm -hmm. don't have to make your light. You don't have to force your information on people. I mean, there's so many concepts of where we're from. It's ridiculous. Me, right. I, I'm not from the planet. I know that. I can look mm -hmm. around and say, you know, this here is not where I'm from. I'm a visitor. I know mm -hmm. that for a fact. I'm not going to tell everybody that. I'm telling you right now. But I'm mm -hmm. saying that I'm not going to claim this one little space. You're not going to tie me down to a grid. Mm -hmm. And say, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. Who I am today is not who I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. When I used to do lectures back at the old days in L.A. at the Good Life, I had a huge ass ego. Mm -hmm. I was yelling at the people, too. I right. had on mud cloth vests, army pants, army boots. <laughs> and I was, you know what I'm saying? I had put all this stuff together, man, and I was upset. And it was Dick Gregory that came and said, bro, you didn't think about to take you out, bro. I probably won't be seeing you again because... Your ego is too big. You're giving too much agitating information. You're not giving anything, anybody anything that could help. And 90% of your message is the problem. You're not talking about any solutions. Once you begin to talk about the problem, the problem, the problem, you expand it. You actually did. You are a messenger and an agent of the problems. You heard what I said. You may be a secret, sacred messenger of the problem. And right. you are the problem, spreading the problem, right? Because you just watched the news and you heard about what happened on the news and you got to tell everybody else. If I'm living in a log cabin somewhere, you know what I'm saying? If I'm living in a log cabin next somewhere next to the, you know, next to the river and, you know, my friends are the animals. I don't know what's happening in the world. So it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? I don't know what else is happening out there in the world because I don't have the news, the six o'clock news, the news that's not hanging me. So I'm in love, peace and harmony. So that is the world. The world is not the earth. You create your space. You create a sacred space. If you found a sacred space, then you live in it. But if you feel like you come from the world of the alligators and this, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 uh, the, the, the swamp. And now you're out, you, you actually are out of the swamp, but you want to talk about the swamp and how hard it was and what they did to you and what happened in the past. You're living in the past. We're in a beautiful time. Right now, Dr. B's life, since the beginning of this thing they call 2024, has changed drastically. 
Mm. Every single day, just today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just today, I can think about all the amazing things that happened today. Mm -hmm. I made some, I, you know, I, I use pressure cooker a lot to cook food because it gets rid of the lectins and, you know, food cooks really well and quick and you can steam things. And so I, I, I put some things in my pressure cooker and mm -hmm. I was a little sleepy because I did a radio show this morning and I never really went to sleep and I slept through the show. I talked on automatic on the show. People said it was great. That was on automatic. Then I put some stuff in my pressure cooker and I walked away. I just put whatever I could think of in the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. Man, let me tell you something. I, if, if it wasn't so late, when we get off the show, I'd want to go down there and have another bowl because it was off the chain. Mm. It was amazing. It changed me energetically because I let go and I became like a, I, I became, you know, totally improvisational in the mm. moment. Yeah. When yeah. I ate that food, it was changing me. Yeah. Now, my point here is, is that just buzz your day, your life may be going a certain way. Do you have to go and tell everybody about it? Mm. No, you don't have to. But what I have chosen to do is attempt to give people a more, I don't want to say a positive, a more agreeable point of view of what's happening. Because we know what had happened and what we think happened. If we in our spiritual quest are always being angry and mean and forceful and egotistical. Is that really something good to do and to talk about all the problems? You know, there's some things that people say about what to eat and the way a lot of us natural health specialists now everybody's into natural health. It's like everybody, almost every, every other person's a herbalist. And, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. To tell me that what I'm eating is going to kill me. And people have been eating this forever. <laughs> but if I eat that, it's going to kill It ain't, didn't kill me. If I believe it, it begins to kill me. It reduces my life. So if everything here is made of quantum particles, everything. It's made yes. of the same quantum particles. Yes. If I can do a conversion factor, if I can wave cast into the quantum field, all of a sudden I can turn a poison into a medicine. If you own it, now most people are not ready for this because they haven't gone through the alchemy and, and, and whatever they need to go through to do this, to change the physical <clears> nature, <throat> to change the particles of something so that something that would be poisonous to most people are not poisonous to you. Mm -hmm. So that means that, yeah, you could probably eat almost anything. I'm not saying it's best to do this. I'm saying that we sometimes reduce our power and make belittle ourselves, right? And talk about what they are doing to us, what they did to our food. Well, what are you doing to your food? Mm -hmm. And is your message poisonous? Even though you may be giving some information are you giving it in a poisonous, egotistical, loud, abrasive way to some people that didn't even ask for it? Now, some people, they go, because when I used to do those lectures where I was angry and yelling and screaming, oh, the place was packed. When I used to talk about all the, the companies and I used to name the companies that did what they did back in the day, oh, this place was, was packed. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was people, they couldn't wait to get in to hear how bad it was. Mm -hmm. They came in, right? They was upset when they got there. When they, when they left, they was mad as hell. People was ready to go tear something up because mm. I thought that this information was helpful, but it wasn't helpful. It became helpful. And I wasn't giving any solutions. It wasn't any light. So a lot of times I think that, you know, we should become more conscious. This is what we need to be conscious of, mm -hmm. of maybe uh, first getting permission, knowing who you're talking to and finding a way to find love and solutions. The old way was anger. The old way was victimhood, being mad. We had to fight. And sometimes you got to get angry to get yourself together. Mm -hmm. Once you find out what's going on, you're going to go through a state of anger. That's, that's okay. Because you got to get angry to wake up sometime. Angry mm -hmm. gets things done. Yeah. And they're from the American <laughs> gods. And they're from, and they're from you remember well, the show? Yeah, 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 I remember, yeah. yeah. Anger gets things done. I'm not saying yeah. don't be angry. 
I'm saying at some point, it would be great for us to begin to transmute this anger into love, especially now, because everything we do now affects everything else really quickly. We're way past the quickening now. The quickening is old. Everything mm -hmm. that we do affects us, affects everything else in a very quick fashion. Things are moving very fast. The molecules are vibrating at a level right now that is this has never happened before. We're at a brand new place. So we should be careful as speakers, as teachers, as whatever. You know what I'm saying? What is our message? And we need to first get centered and figure out what we're here to do. Some mm -hmm. of us are here to be agents of evil in a, in a positive way. This is deep. You could be an agent of evil and say that you're conscious, but yeah. be a part of a way of thinking that just causes more resistance, more pain, more inflammation, and more dis-ease. Because if you make people more angry, their liver begins to shut down. And the liver... It, it ha happens to hold on to anger. The kidneys happen to hold on to fear. The stomach happens to hold on to worry. The lungs happen to hold on to grief. And if we st if we keep vibrating them in a way and not convert it, because we should should be slowly each day beginning to uh, uh, convert these energies into something usable. We've got to compost some of this stuff, especially now because we've gone through the Mahurta. We've gone through the shift. And our DNA... Our very DNA, our genes right now have changed. And there's a part of our genes that what they call the junk DNA, which is on. And we are programming it with our words, with our thoughts, with our feelings. So the challenge of each day is to find the best. This is Dr. B's concept. To find the best part of the day. Find the best part of the lesson. And be able to communicate in a way where you're not being narcissistic because the narcissist is forcing things and acting in ways to create an illusion, right? To get something done. The narcissist will act like, oh my God, I'm just a victim. Oh, I feel so <laughs> sad. Oh my God. I mean, you come to help the narcissist, right? And all mm -hmm. of a sudden the narcissist is actually a wild, you know, saber toothed dog. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And a lot of times, you know, there are people who gravitate towards narcissists. And there are people who are quote unquote healers. Who are gra who gravitate towards sick people yeah. in relationships. You may have had you be if you start looking at your relationships, you may have always been with people who were sick coming to you, the doctor. You're like the healer, the nurturer. Yeah. The well, guess what? Right. That's who the narcissist is looking for, the nurturers. Looking for the people that who are you know gonna be open. Oh my god, he's he's just a wounded dog, and I need to take care of him. I can change him. And this whole thing is an act. Well, this is what happens with a lot of cultures and stuff when you start pointing the finger saying what they did. Oh my god, but we're so we were we were under so much oppression and they cry, and then all of a sudden you find out they're actually controlling things. So narcissism is when we use some of these new spiritual approaches in conscious language and awareness talk because everybody's got it now to actually create an illusion like in the in, in to, to to have to be masquerading as a very helpful loving person to actually be doing the bidding of what we call the enemy dr b is it possible because that i've heard that uh people say that that certain healers attract narcissists um is it possible that the healers are just as much as a narcissist as the narcissist because they're always looking for somebody to heal instead of looking for somebody who's whole. Meanwhile, the narcissist is looking for somebody to take advantage or manipulate. Is it possible they're just as much as a narcissist as the narcissist is, Dr. B? Man, you really twisted that one up, bro. <laughs> I got to unwind that ball of yarn. <laughs> is the healer just, as much, as, yeah, yeah. just yeah. as much a narcissist as the narcissist? You could be... In certain situations, yes, because sometimes you gravitate, gravitate, there's a new word, gravitate, <laughs> gravitate. you gravitate, <laughs> right, to sick people. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. <laughs> a lot of times people gravitate towards information which is hurtful, which is angry, 
we gravitate sometimes towards, like I said, when I used to do those lectures where I had the boots on and I was yelling and screaming, talking about all the bad stuff the corporations had done. Yeah. It was packed. When I started talking about love and harmony, Empty. it was like maybe 20% of the people. Yeah. And some folks, somebody came to one of my lectures once when I had, you know, made my transition to being more loving and open. And they were like, Dr. B, what is all this love talk? Have you lost your mind? Do you know what the corporations are doing to you? And they started naming all this stuff. I said, well, if I stay in that mindset, it expands. If my reticular activating system focuses on an idea or an ideal or an idol, it my brain begins to look for more evidence that that is true. So if you say that the world is terrible and it's coming to an end, your brain, you're you're the boss, you're the CEO, you're the you're the generator, you're the genie. You begin to create scenarios to prove what you're focusing on is real. And you'll find more of it. If you focus on what you would like to create or a better world or more, you know, more harmony, if you focus on that, if that's your goal, you will actually attract more of it. I have just proved it. It just happened to me. It's happening to me now. If you focus on how bad it is, it gets worse. It's just like if you have pain, and I've been through some pain. If you focus on the pain and how much it hurts, it, it doesn't it hurt more. If you keep looking at it, oh, my God. Oh, that's when you go into shock, when you see how bad it is. and You, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you, if, but if you focus away. I remember my mother one time I had to go get some shot back in the day. It was something, I don't know, one of them things. He gave us like 50 shots. And my mother started playing a little game with me and telling me a little story and, you know, and looking away from the doctor. Because I kept looking at the doctor with this needle and I already knew what was about to happen. I was about to be punctured. You know what I'm saying? And I was afraid. But my mother started singing a little song and we played this little game. And I'm looking at her and I'm looking away from the doctor. Do you know, I didn't even know that the doctor actually had done the puncture. Mm. Because I focused on something else. It's our focus. What are you focusing on? What is your daily goal? If your goal is to have more love and harmony, then you will. If, you, if you're looking for the wounded dog, if you're looking for the wounded person, like the, like the sister saying right here, if, if you're an empath, you will sometimes always look for the wounded people. And sometimes people are professional wounded. They're, they're the professional wounded. They know how to be wounded. Oh, help me. Yeah. I was watching a Star Trek one time. And the guy was like, you know, help me. I need help, please. And they went over there. And this guy jumped up and he was like some evil creature. Mm. Because we sometimes, right, we sometimes are not focused. And this is very important. And I'm going to talk about this on our on our class that we're doing this weekend. Once you change your focus and your goal, mm -hmm. everything changes. But for the most part, because of what we have been through mentally, physically, what we took ourselves to, what our families, you know, helped to create when we, we speak this language of disempowerment and we're, we're, we're lack and, you know, a lot of us are lack and limited and we don't have enough. And we're always speaking in the terms of everything being little and what's bad mm -hmm. that we are now the captains of a ship. That's going to find more of that in the ocean of life. You are piloting your ship towards the iceberg, towards the, you know what I'm saying? The ship eating sharks. Mm -hmm. They have ship eating sharks. <laughs> but if you focus on that, they do. You know what I'm saying? It's real. Mm -hmm. Wave cast. Once you, even as an empath, mm -hmm. start focusing your energy a little different. Stop looking for the wounded people because nobody's whole. You, right. you, you're not gonna be. I mean, you know, you're not gonna be a hundred percent on the planet. It's impossible. So mm -hmm. don't have no huge ego. Some people say, ah, "Man, I'm healed." Man, I did such and such. No, each day you're healing. Well, each day our cells are reproducing themselves. There are genes that fix broken genes, but it has to happen daily. You see what I'm saying? Your your nervous system is always attempting to repair itself. So it has to do with what you're focusing on. When you're learning to envision the best, when you're learning to focus away from just the sick people, 
all of a sudden people who may be, uh, and, and you, like I said, nobody's going to be a hundred percent, but sometimes you're looking for the person that's the worst. They can't be fixed. They don't even desire to be fixed. The average person, right, does not believe they can be helped. They don't believe it. They don't know it. They don't know. And, and you know, you, you say, well, I can't regrow tissue. What well, when you get a cut, don't you regrow tissue? How do you, do you sit there and stare at it all day to make it regrow? It does it automatically. This is part of your subconscious mind. If you focus on giving away 90% of your energy, something's going to call for you to come give it. I learned <clears throat> the 10% rule. Mm -hmm. I give 10%. Everything I'm giving right now on this, you know, on this broadcast is 10%. 90% of the time, I am investing in myself. Oh, that's very selfish, Dr. B. Well, what's wrong with being selfish? So who, when did it get a part of our vernacular that being self-healing, self-ish, self-caring is not good? I think you got that from the church. One of them belief systems where you're supposed to give it all up and now you save 10% for yourself. No. If you get into the rule, let's just go to the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, take care of yourself. Do the very best you can for yourself. And invest 20% of the time in helping other people. And then you'll get that down to 10% at some point. That's the tithing thing. But we've got that twisted where we are like ambulance chasers a lot of times. We're always looking for the wounded. In fact, those are the relationships that some people love to get into because somebody's broken. And I, I'm going to tell you something that's real deep. I got a call many years ago from a gentleman and his wife. He had about nine major diseases. Doctor said this, you know, dude, you're done. Basically, all we can do is numb you up and, you know, let you just watch TV. And he chose to do one of my programs. And this was many years ago. And he, he went on a whole healing journey with us at Elevation. His wife was on the phone. She had many illnesses also because a lot of people share. You know what I'm saying? They have different frequencies of the same dis-ease and disorder. The man within six months to a year no longer had any of these incurable illnesses because he changed his life. He changed what he ate. He changed what he did. He took the herbs. He did exactly what we said. He did the breathing. He did the visioning. He did the focusing. He did grounding. He did everything that Dr. B asked of him. He changed. Do you know that a year later, I got a call from his wife. She cussed me out. You know why? Because her husband changed the way he ate. He don't go to the Sizzler. He don't go to Outback Steakhouse. You understand what I'm saying? He don't eat drag legs or whatever they call them, them swamp creatures. He doesn't live the same. He does yoga. He does breathing. He walks. He exercises. He lost over a hundred and something pounds. And he don't hang out with the friends anymore. He's now down sitting by the ocean meditating each day. He's changed his life. He's changed his friendship. And the wife says that I broke him up. And she's mad at me. I did it. She had a chance to get herself healed too and to change her life. But she wanted to keep him sick. Check this out. Did you Do you realize a lot of times that there are mates that you may choose that would like to keep you sick? They want to keep you because if they're like healers, or nurturers or certain types of people who feel like the only type, only way I can get you is to keep you sick. Some people who love you will keep you sick. They'll keep you eating a certain way, living a certain way. Why? So they don't lose you. Some people get sick. Check it out. Some people create illness in themselves to get attention. Some people will go out and create an illness. Why? To get attention. This is this is a type of narcissism. Oh, the poor me, because nobody may not come around and help you all the time. You need assistance, and 
you don't get enough love. The minute you announce that you have this terrible disease, all of a sudden, people come around. They're sending you flowers and gifts and sending you letters, and they're calling with that soft voice of, oh, Jonathan, how are you feeling? And Jonathan may have never gotten that kind of attention. Some people create illness in themselves because that attracts attention. Are you feeling me? Brother Rich, you there? Brother Rich sound like he's dealing with the whole situation over there. Anyway, a lot of times the mate will keep a person sick and feed them and keep them weak to control them. This is another type of narcissism. If he gets better or if she gets better, they may lose. They may leave me. I may not have anybody here with me unless I keep them sick. So a lot of times people don't want to choose to go with something that's holistic, a new lifestyle for their loved one because the loved one may leave and it's fear based. You see, now we're back on the farm again. Now, all of a sudden, we are oppressive and we are part of oppression and yeah, we're, we have trauma bond. You understand what I'm saying? Brother Rich, where you at? I don't think Brother Rich is still on the show. I think I'll take a word. The Dr. B serious show. Dr. B. So just think about that for a second. How sometimes a person feels that they must keep somebody else down to keep them. If you attempt to hold people down, you got to stay down with them. So while you're forcing somebody, right, to be a certain way, if you're forcing somebody to be with you, you're forcing somebody to believe in you, then you're holding them down. That's not love. That's not, a lot of times what we're calling love is not love, it's fear, and it's power, and it's control. This is what happened in a lot of marriages and these, oh, these systems where the, the person is told is, is, is a narcissist controlling the other person. You know, love, if you if it, it should be something that there's a natural affinity for each other, not where you gotta make them believe, make them be who they are. And when they change, you don't want them to change because if they change, they may leave you. So you will create a scenario of drama. Like today. Uh, you there, Brother Rich? You back? He's still not back. I remember it was many years ago on Valentine's Day. And I was dating this lady, and I had only been dating her for about six months. And it was Valentine's Day. After all the talking and all that over the phone, and oh my gosh. We decided we was going to get together on, on Valentine's Day and it was going to be our first time to be extremely loving together. So I went and I bought some flowers and I stopped by. I was driving down the street and I saw C's candy. I went in. It was a line and out in front of C's candy. So I went and bought some C's candy because, you know, you got to buy some candy for Thanksgiving. Right. Some sugar, which is a whole nother issue. So I went in there and bought this candy, waited in line. Then I went to this sister's house. And I gave her the flower. Well, I didn't hand her the flowers. I hand she looked at the candy. She says, what's that? I said, these are candies, you know, happy Valentine's Day. She says, you, you, I don't eat C's candy. I said, you don't? No, I hate C's candy. I like Edderman's. I'm like, Edderman's? What is it, Edderman? That's a high-end candy. You can only get it at certain locations. You should have known. If you love me, you would have known. Now, her voice used to be so soft and so smooth. It was creamy and silky as we talked on the phone many nights. All of a sudden now, this other voice pops up. It's ratchet sounding and rough and draggy. And she's cussing me out now. She ain't started cussing yet, but she's about to be cussing. About how she wants Edderman's candies and not sees it. And if I loved her, I would have known. I would have asked what kind of candy she wanted. After checking out where she was coming from and her eyes, you know what I'm saying? They became reptile eyes. You know, they talk about people changing her tongue became forked. I took the flowers, threw them down and said, I'm done and walked out. 
She's yelling, where the hell you going? What happened to the soft, silky, loving voice? <laughs> what happened to that? She transformed. You're talking about reptilian. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? She <laughs> became a reptilian right in front of me because I didn't know what kind of candy she liked. And then I began to think about it. Why are we buying candy for people anyway? Sugar. Sugar shuts down your brain. It shuts down your consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you know, you see the product says it's got four grams of sugar. That's a teaspoon of sugar. That's a teaspoon of processed sugar. That shuts down your pineal, so you have no connection to the cosmos anymore. It shuts down your pituitary, so your 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 uh, your uh, oxytocin is not flowing, so love is not really in the air like it should be. It shuts down your hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus is the thing that tells your body you've had enough of something, or too much, or you need more. So your balance is off. Processed sugar, even in the health food store. You walk down the health food store, you realize this is the health food store. It's got everything got so much sugar in it. I'm talking about the processed sugar. So that shuts down who you are. So actually, a lot of times love is allowing people, right, or, or giving people something that's hurtful, that's going to cause them pain because you love them. They want poison. They want poison for their birthday. So you go give them poison to make them happy. <clears throat> Think about that. Yeah. That's uh, just a whole perspective. I'm going off on a tangent. And, you know, you was going. No, no, it's all good. Yeah, I, I had to take care of something. I had to um, take care of something with my son real quick. I forgot to press mute. So a couple of people that you heard. Don't act so dramatic. I see some of the brothers acting dramatic like women and shit. I had to take care of some family business. I'm right. I'm right back. Forgot to We're glad you're taking care of family business. You know a lot of folks ain't taking care of you know, Most business. of these niggas don't even see their kids and shit, man. So let a loud brother risk to tell you. I'm here every other night for y'all. But um, congratulations, yeah, brother. Yeah, but um, wow. I mean, wow. Um, did you make? Uh, we're about to hit the hour mark. Did you make your announcement yet for the workshop you got coming up this weekend? Because while we got we got about two thousand people in here, I want them to know what's going on this weekend and how they could tap into this energy, this butterfly energy, and avoid getting caught in this narcissistic trap that the majority. Not the majority, but a lot of people get caught up in when they uh, go the conscious route, Dr. B. So go ahead and tell them about it. So that. there's two events. One Indeed. is tomorrow night yes, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And mm -hmm. it's Dr. B's serious natural uh, uh, insights. Mm -hmm. I'll be talking about uh, uh, there's a lot coming through right now that I'd like to share and um, to talk about some things. And this was this is totally free tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can go to elevationtime.com and go to events and you'll see the event for tomorrow night. I, I, I would ask everybody to come tell your friends because there are some insights and some things happening, some things that, you know, that I'd like to say and share right now that can help us uh, if we, you know, act on it. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, we're starting a series this particular series, let me find a, a name because the soulful science of change and metamorphosis, the soulful science of change and metamorphosis with Dr. B. Sirius and Dr. Madi Brown. Dr. Madi Brown is a naturopathic doctor. Uh, he is a scientist. He's a researcher. Uh, his life is deep what he's been through. We met about 22 years ago when we were getting elevation started and he came and became my assistant. He worked with me for many years and he's gone on to become a prominent natural health uh, doctor. He's also a, a regular medical doctor, too. So he's on both sides. That's what they call a naturopathic doctor. Um, his information is powerful. When I met him, he was working at a genetics lab in Los Angeles where they make babies. When he got his one of his first jobs he in North Carolina, he worked at a chicken factory and he talks about what he experienced at the chicken factory, how they make chickens and design chickens and what chickens do and how they eat. So this was like part of his roots and, you know, and the things that he's went through in his life, gone through in his life have, you know, he's very, 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 very deep brother. He's, he's you know, he's, he's, he's going to be sharing with us. He's going to do the first three hours 
on Saturday, and I'll do the second three hours. And we'll be talking about remembering our birthright, restoring balance, and rebirthing into the now. This is a three-part class. So there's going to be part one will be on Saturday. Part two will be next month on the 16th. And then there's going to be part three, which is going to be, you know, in the next month. And we'll announce all that. So this is the class, the soulful science of change and metamorphosis. This is not going to be just talking about concepts. We're going to be giving the tools that people can use to transform their lives. And let me just show you or read off some of the things that we're going to cover. How to regulate and balance the brain and nervous system. How to align with the natural rhythms of life. How to remember and reprogram your concept of self. The self-fulfilling prophecy. That one is going to be heavy. The trap that we get caught in with this, with the self-fulfilling prophecy by, by what we speak is huge. Memes, a meme, socially accepted ideas, idols, and ideologies. How to break out of the memes and the sweet delusion. The sweet delusion is what we're talking about now with the sugar and what how sugar affects every single part of you, even if you're into natural health. You know what I'm saying? Eating natural things, you got to be aware of this sugar delusion. And the mm. sugar delusion is not just the sugar that you're eating. It's the sugary ideas. It's the sugary uh, 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 concepts that we have. So sometimes there's sugar-coated things that need to be raw, you know what I'm saying, and get to the bitter truth to change. And you've got to go through a certain amount of transformation, which usually is not easy. A lot of folks don't realize that to go through this shift to get to the next level, you're going to be stressed. You're going to be tried. You're going to go through trial and tribulation. And sometimes it's extremely painful to shift and move into another space. So that's on Saturday. Now, what you do is go to elevationtime.com, elevationtime.com. And like I said, for tomorrow night, make sure you go to the free webcast. Click on that. You don't have to sign up for that. Just click on it. You'll be in. And for the for the class on Saturday, you have to register for the class. And folks have been waiting for this class now for about eight months because Dr. Madi and I actually started this process before God power. And we decided to wait to after the God power because this is actually a piece of the God power formula. This thing about the soulful science. Mm. of change and metamorphosis a part is it's like after god power now that you're becoming more godlike mm -hmm. you have to be in control of the vehicle mm -hmm. and the things that used to work are probably not going to work anymore you've got to change your whole attitude your whole everything so we're going to help folks with that like i said that's going to be a three-part class the first one is on this saturday make sure you're there tell your friends tell your family tell your wife tell your husband tell your friends. yeah I want to I want to ask you real quick about Dr. B about um, the idea, you know, while we're going through this metamorphosis and we're growing and we're going to this next level, you just mentioned tell your friends, tell your family, tell your wife and so and so. A, a lot of times people and me and you talked about it somewhat in the past, but when you're when, when you get into that next level, the matrix, if for lack of a better words, the, the program or um, the system, whatever you want to call this illusion that we're in, they will, it will directly use your mate, your friends, your family, your mentors. It could have been Dick Gregory. You could have had a, a fallout with Dick Gregory that we don't even know about over something, but they will use them to test you. And it's just a test. It's not meant to be taken personal, Dr. B. It's not meant for you to despise or hate that person or not like that person. It was just a test for you. And them not knowing they was participating in the test, but it was just a personal test for you to get over a certain hurdle. And the Matrix had to use somebody close to you because that's what makes the shit real. Focus. You got the Dr. B. Now, because we're helping people get over some important hurdles on the road to consciousness. I'm glad we talked about the spiritual narcissism, but now let's talk about them being tested by somebody that they never expected to be tested by before in their lives. And I've went through it with plenty of loved ones in my life, plenty of mentors where I'm like, is my mentor hating on me? Like I've been through it with a lot of people, brother. So talk to me about getting over that hurdle when you're on the road to getting to the next level, Doc. It oh. is essential. Yes. 
that we go through hormesis. I don't know what, what that means, Doc. I don't know what that means. You know, I, I'm gonna read it from from from, yeah. from you gotta tell me, Doc. I don't know. I want to read what it is, what they say. Uh, here, here we go. Okay. Okay. In the field of biology and medicine, okay. hormesis is defined as an adaptive response of cells and organisms to a moderate, usually intermittent stress. Mm. Mm -hmm. In order to change and to grow, you must go through stress. To make steel, mm. it has to go through heat. Mm -hmm. To make a diamond, do you know mm -hmm. the amount of, of pressure and years and years of, of pressure and stress that's got to go through to become a diamond? Mm. Mm. Hormesis is the process of going through the stress, the pain. As they said, it's intermittent stress. It's usually not forever, but you've got to go through this change, right? It, the hormesis is an adaptive response of cells for you right. to adapt. Right. And sometimes you've got to go through hell to get to heaven. Mm. It's an adaptive process. You want to get there and just read some books and you know, eat some, you know, you sitting around eating up a green beans all day and drinking, you know, alkaline water. And you feel like you got it. You, mm -hmm. you know, you change your name. You're wearing some, you know, what you call spiritual clothing. And right. But what I'm saying is the greatest tests are going to be challenging. You will be challenged. You will be. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'm I finishing my first book now. I'm, I'm, I'm about halfway done with the editing process of my first book, which is going to be about parasites. The next book is going to be about my life and my 13 mentors. I've had 13 mentors. I've been very, I, I would say very, um, I don't want to say the words that we normally say. I've been fortunate mm -hmm. to have a bunch of teachers. Mm -hmm. They all tested me. Yeah. And all of one them? of them was my grandmother. <laughs> I remember I was going to California. She said, son, sit down. Let me talk to you. And she handed me this, this little Bible. She said, I want you to open up to any page in this Bible. Every day, open up to any page you want. And I want you to read a prayer from this book. Don't ever leave home without a prayer. I'm like, at the time, I was like, okay, she want me to read from the Bible. No, what she was basically telling me was that you will be tested. If you don't have a prayer, if you don't have a focus, if you don't have what's called a telos, which means that you have a vision of where you're going, mm. then you will get off track because your family, who you say that, that you, you think they love you, but sometimes they love you based on fear. They fear for you in the name of love. Sometimes your family is afraid for you to change. They don't want you to change. They, sometimes, the, 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 this is like I said earlier, you've got mates that don't want their, their loved ones to get better. They're sick. They like be, they like them being home. At least, at least he's home all the time. At least he's here with me. He's not running the streets. <laughs> sometimes, this, this, this is real heavy. Yeah. Good, Doc. Come the on, man. Take your time. People <laughs> love you the most. Yes. Use yes. this word love. Yes. May not have a true definition or an idea of what love means to you. Ex explain that one down. What does love mean? Uh -huh. What does it mean? Everybody has a different concept of what love means. Some people mm -hmm. is gifts. Some people just want time. You know, I remember, you know, there was a person that they, they wanted me to, to be violent with them. I never would, but they wanted me to. And that was their vision of love, cussing them out, treating them mean. Love means something different to everybody. It's not a universal, you know, thing called love. There mm -hmm. is a universal love, but most people haven't gotten there. Mm -hmm. well, how are you acting? What are you doing? There's somebody right now. Love is an action. It is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a noun. It's, a, it's an action. But what action is the person that you saying that says they love you? What are they doing? How do they even know? You see, if somebody says they love you, what you may want to do or what you may choose to do 
is have a discussion about what that means. Somebody says, I love you. Stop and say, well, but what does that mean? Because sometimes you don't know. You have no idea what they mean by love. Especially if you're in the honeymoon phase or you're relating. You do everything. You're talking softly. You you make sure you put your fork on the right and the spoon on the left or however that goes. You know what I'm saying? You make mm-hmm. sure you got your best foot forward and your cologne is on and you talk softly. And then later on, after you get to know each other, after you've been, you know, together mm-hmm. for a certain amount of time, your subconscious original person comes online and you're, you know, you're angry, you're upset. Because you feel like you got the person now. You've attained them. You own them. That's my husband. That's my wife. That's my man. That's my Jesus. That's my Buddha. You want to own things. And you feel like you got it. You've captured it because this is a part of oppression. This comes from the oppressor's mindset that you have to own something. Mm. When the some of the most successful people in the world don't own anything. You don't own anything. When you let go, right, and you're not worried about your loved one leaving you because you're so good and you're so great together, that, mm-hmm. that, that magnetosphere that you create is so powerful that you're not worried. And if the person does slip out on you and go do something else, well, they needed to go do that. That's what they did. Now you know who they are. You have to accept that people are not perfect. You can't own a person. The more you try to own them, the more they're going to... And it's really funny because when you tell people what they can't do, what do they do? Do You tell people what they can't do. Look at all the laws we got about what you can't do. You Mm -hmm. can't run lights. I've seen people running lights like crazy. When you tell people what they can't is cannot, so it's both. You see? Those words that really mean both should not. People do it. Love is not something that everybody truly has a referent for. They have references for based on their life, based on what they've been around, based on their environment, based on the experiences that they've had. You may to you may need to sit with the person, talk with the person, and this may go over some time to discuss what is love because most people are in like a not. Like a lot, like a not. Like a lot. I like that too, like a not. And they call it love. It's called love. But a lot of times it's 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 love, it's it's fear masquerading as love, it's anger masquerading as love. So we got to be very careful here mm. when we talk about what is love and what do we like and what do we need, what do we desire. A lot of folks don't want to say what they truly desire mm. because they don't feel like they're gonna get it. Be upfront, say what's really going on here, have that clear channel communication. I don't even know what the question was now, man. I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> I was talking about the matrix and, and I'll give oh. you a, a quick, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me, let me give you this quick example. Doc, ahead, why, go ahead, go ahead, I know, you, I know you, get, well, you get a little water break or something like that. Doc. So let me tell you something. When I was, when I was young in, in my early twenties, I'm probably about 22 years old. My favorite speaker was God. Bobby Hammett. Bobby Hammett was like my favorite speaker and I watched him all the time. One time I sent the brother, you, you heard of the brother Bobby Hammond before, right? Heard of him. Come yeah, on. yeah. I, I sent the brother a donation one time. And um, and with the donation, I sent him $300. Now, I'm 21 years old. I sent Bobby $300 donation. At that time, I, he used to tell us that if we're going to send a donation, send it in an envelope and wrap it in aluminum foil so the, the male people won't know that it's money inside. So that, that's how we used to do it back in the day. Um, So I sent the brother $300, and I sent him the book, As a Man Thinketh. In the, in, the, in the envelope as well about, you know, just as far as attractive thing, because I heard some, some other teachers talk about the hermetic the hermet, hermetic principles in the book yes. James, by James Allen. So um, Bobby had, re- I, call, I called him, or he had called me. We had talked a couple of times before and oh man, he, he cursed me out, uh, Dr. B. Oh, he was bad. He thought I was trying to stun on him because I sent him the book. So he like, I'm Bobby Hammond. You said you sent me this book. What what the and I'm like in my mind, I'm like, oh shit, this is my favorite. This this dude tried to stud on me like it wasn't even nothing like that. I'm nigga, I sent you $300. I'm trying to help. Like, I didn't mean that like that wasn't my attention at all. So I did uh somebody said I know this story. We talked, Paddock talked about this, Bobby. We all talked about this before, but um, I didn't back down from the situation. I'm 22. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, slow down, brother, slow down, slow down. So we had hung up. Then he had called me back. I don't know what he, 
I don't know if we hung up or, or we just, or the phone got quiet for a second, but he was like, you know what, brother? Yeah, I like you. You didn't back down. You know what? You was right. I was bugging out, man. Don't worry about that, man. You know, Bobby Heavy, he did the classic. That was, that was a, a wild dude right there. And he was like, you know, and it was like, he was just like a complete, a completely different person again. But it was like, I went through that for, I felt for a certain reason to see how I would react because I was going to a certain level in my life where I'm at now, where I had to, I, I, in my life, in my life story, Dr. B, I got to stand strong on my word and on everything. So what better way to see how strong I am, but by the universe putting a person that I admire in front of me, who's going to berate me and get at me to see how I would respond to it. Would I fall down and fall to or would I continue to stand strong? So I wasn't disrespectful or anything, but I looked at it as, as a test. And because of that situation, me and Bobby Hemmett was tight after that. After that situation, we was mad tight, bro. Like we talked all the time. When he came to New York, he came to my spot. My lady would cook for him. We, I would take him to the um, LIU, the lecture spot. Um, you know, it was just we was just real close after that. Um, you know, I was cool with his wife. So that 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 single lesson right there, that single incident, that single whatever happened right there, it taught me a lot about you know just the matrix using people that you admire or love to see how you respond. But shout out to the great. Bobby Hemet, I love you, my brother. Go ahead, Doctor B. I just, I went there. People heard that story before from Paddock, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> Every step of transformation moving forward is connected to its opposite. Everything yeah. is connected to its opposite. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected to its opposite. It all depends on your focus and what you're moving for and what is your mind towards and what is your mindset? What mm. is your telos? Look that word up, telos. telos yeah. You will be tested as you climb the mountain by gravity pulling you back. Mm. You will mm. be tested by the ones who say they love you, right? And they're mm. going to say sometimes you're crazy. You've lost your mind. When I left college at 2.5 weeks, do you not <laughs> understand how everybody was upset? Mm. You, what do you mean you left college? Yes, 2.5 weeks. I learned enough. I got it. I'm out of here. Damn. I wouldn't look for George Clinton. You know what I'm saying? I want to be Paul <laughs> Never got in the group totally, but oh, I, you know, that was my new focus. Mm -hmm. Everything that you move towards, right? That's going to be something that's going to be great, is going to test you. You're going to go through hormesis. And it, and here's another important thing. If you don't go through hormesis, mm -hmm. which is the stress test to see if you are able to handle the next level, then you won't make it to the next step. If there is a butterfly mm -hmm. struggling to get out of the cocoon and you, because you're a loving human, would like to help it. So you go over and you get a little tweezers and stuff and you tear the cocoon open to get mm -hmm. the butterfly out because he was struggling. And he wasn't going to make it. Mm -hmm. The butterfly dies. Mm. I love where you're going with this. Yeah, because bro. it could not, you didn't allow it to go through the shift and the change and the alchemy. Yeah. And the what they call calcination, which is the first step of alchemy, right? To change, to, to be transmuted, to, to get through, right? What it had to go through to get to the next level. We mm. will be tested. See, a lot of us, we don't like being tested. We want it easy. We got apps now. You yeah. see what I'm saying? We could just hit the app and, oh, boy, we got a filter. We don't want to go through what it takes to look good and, and be healthier. We got an app that makes you look healthy. Somebody said they got an app that makes you look like a vegan. I don't know how true it is. <laughs> they said meat eaters look one way and oh, vegans shit. look another. They got a vegan a, a, a filter. Oh, they might. Shit. I mean, it's crazy. I've been yeah. meeting people later, lately where I meet them. They're on the internet and I meet them. I'm like, who are you? Oh, that's, I'm the one that's... No, you... Who? What? Who are you? Oh, that you know, I was a, that was a filter because people are used to faking everything now. A lot of folks don't they don't desire to go through the test. They don't want to feel the pain. They want to take a shot. They got a weight loss shot. They got so many side I effects. Heard. It ain't everybody a side. It ain't, it. They ain't side no. effects. They be side effects. Yo, yo, doc. Everybody in the hood taking that weight loss shot now, man. Hey, man. I just had. I just saw something here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, man, I know y'all heard about that, man. People in the hood taking that shit like crazy. When I looked up the effects, because see, it's see, it's not side effects with drugs. Yeah. There's their effects. 
Get rid of the word side effects. Let's say the effects of okay. the drug. Yeah. Not they're not B side. They're not lower. They're not little. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I'm not gonna even say the name. I don't want no. Don't say you know, that. We you don't want you, no trouble. Yeah, you know. I'll put it on the screen. Mm. But you know how you know, mm. big pharma. You know, but we all you know that that's it right there, y'all. But good. Mm. You take that there and look at the name. You see, it sound like Rome, don't it? <laughs> it got something to do with Rome. The Romans again. This is uh this is Caesar. You know. Yeah. My point here is is we have gotten to a point. Well, we would like everything easy. Yeah, Our feelings get hurt quickly from words. People said something and you're just upset. You just, they hurt your feelings. You allowed somebody to cause pain in your body. We don't want to feel any struggle, any stress at all. We don't, for the most part, like to be, what, tested. But it is that test that makes us our best. Uh, woo! Go ahead, it is Doc. The test. Go ahead, those, Doc. Right? Those who are the best will be tested the most. A master knows that they must constantly test themselves and retest themselves. Yeah. Why would you? You got 99 black belts. You done kicked everybody's ass on the whole <laughs> on the whole continent of Eurasia. <laughs> right. Now, all of a sudden, the Kung Fu dragon comes to town. Yeah. Right? You go, you sit with your family eating, you know, seaweed, kelp, and rice. Everything's good. You got your children. Your family is warm. Why are you going to put on your Kung Fu outfit to go fight the, the, the Kung Fu dragon? Because a master must always test themselves. That's how you keep the leading edge. Muhammad Ali always had sparring partners that would like, some of them, he said, they were as good or better than him. You test yourself, right, by climbing the tallest mountain. You don't always want to take the shortcut. If you really like to be really great and become master, to master something, you're going to have to take the long cut sometimes. Take the long way home. But we've been conditioned, right? Right? Not all of us, but a lot of us have been conditioned to find the easy route and it don't last. It's fake, it's fake up, it's makeup. Just put all this stuff on and just look a certain way. Just call yourself something. You know what I'm saying? Create this powerful name, but you haven't done what it takes to be that. You see, if you have a powerful name that you've created for yourself that you've snatched from somewhere, well, that is potential and you should be working towards being that. Instead of calling yourself, you know, oh boy, I'm the great, great, great. But you haven't done the great stuff yet. I remember many years ago, I went to St. Louis. I was, you know, when I was really in the music business and everybody wanted to make a CD. We did the first artist, I think his name was Silk Smooth. Yeah, Silk Smooth. And uh, he was one of the first rap artists to go national in St. Louis. That You know, I helped to produce him. And we went to St. Louis and everybody was at the studio. We got off the, 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 the plane. There was people there. But they all wanted to make a CD. And I was like, what do you mean you want to make a CD? I asked this one guy, I said, well, do you rap? He says, no, man. So what do you do, man? You know, I want to get in the studio so you can, you know, show me how to rap. I said, you don't rap already? No, I just want to make a CD. They just wanted to make a CD. They didn't have talent. They didn't go through the trial and the tribulation. See, a lot of people today don't want to go through the trial and the tribulation because it's going to cause some pain. It's going to cause some stress. You got to, what? You got to get in the river, right? And you're going to have to, what? Steer your boat. You're going to have to be the captain. You're going to have to move through. All the different trials and tribulations, the ups, the downs. I remember when I was working at, you know, eating better. Do you know how, you know, chickens used to call me? I would dream of chickens. They was in my state. Dr. B! God damn. I remember I was in the store one time. This is, this is, real, this is real science here. <laughs> I was over buying greens. I said, I'm just going to get greens. That's the only thing I'm going to get is greens. Greens and black eyed peas. So I was over near the greens, and guess what? Yeah. What comes over the store on the, on the on the PA system? All right, everybody, right now the chicken is on sale. Get one wing, get a thousand free right now over in your chicken aisle. Use your club coupon and get one pack of forty eight wings and get another one for free. <laughs> My subconscious said, "You can't let that go. We gotta go over there and get that chicken. You know you the chicken master." This was in my left ear. 
My other ear was like, you ain't supposed to be eating that stuff. You ain't supposed to be eating that stuff. But the saboteur, right, in my head was extremely strong. Because my, I love chicken because I love my family. A lot of times you love certain foods because you love your family and the family connects to those foods and you feel like love. How are you going to be at the Thanksgiving meal and you sitting up eating, you know, a tofurkey? Everybody else is eating real turkey. They eating, And you got this other stuff that you eat. That's a great point. Because it's love connected to the idea of certain things. So I went over to the chicken. I left the greens aisle. I'm being honest. And I looked at them chickens. And for the first time, something hit my brain. Why are there hundreds and hundreds of chicken wings and only about eight whole chickens? Why is it just wings? Where all these wings come from? Where's the rest of the chickens? Mm. And why they got these funny little bruise marks on them? I started mm. looking at them. And then there was a funny smell that came over, right? That's a good smell. What is that smell? And at that point, there was a shift in me. And I wanted to know why there was all these chicken wings. And when I found out from the farmer, the truth, it blew my mind that these chicken wings come from downer birds, birds that were sick, birds that were diseased. And Dr. Mahdi is probably going to talk about that. I don't know if he's going to talk about that on, on Saturday, but he actually will tell you as a, you know, a person that was there uh, on the chicken, you know, uh, manufacturing, you know, assembly line. I'm not saying it just right on the assembly line plant. It was plant, plant based chickens. <laughs> You heard what I said. Plant-based. It just means it was in a plant. Made in a plant. The point here is, is that something usually happens where you wake up to what's going on. And you've got to move past the stress and the pain. Because it was really hard for me to walk away from the chicken. They were calling me. Everywhere I went, I could smell chicken on the corner. It was, you know what I'm saying? It was Popeyes, and I wanted to know why it was called Popeyes. When I found out why it was called Popeyes and what it does to the thyroid, how the thyroid has a lot to do with your eyes, and your eyes begin to, oh, man, it got deep as I began to realize. But I had to have that drama and that trauma in my head and that visual picture of what was happening with the chicken farms. They were chickens. They weren't even chickens, half of them. This is not the natural mm. chicken. It was chickens. Mm. But my point is, is that every step of the way mm -hmm. on the ladder of ascension, mm -hmm. there is a negative or disagreeable force pulling you down to test you. You will be tested. This is not going to be easy. If you're looking for the easy road, then stay off of this road. If you're looking Woo! to find just pushing a button and all of a sudden, boom, you're there. You're the ascended master. Then you might, you're not on the right road. That's going. That's a fake one. That's the metaverse, huh? And then you got the metaverse. Then you got the messiverse. And the messiverse is the mess that you're in because you weren't ready to go through whatever. So now you're domesticated. And if you're domesticated, that means there's a dome over you. And there's a dome over you because you've been created. You've been crossbred. You've been lied to. You You've been through all of that stuff during the age of deception and you live on that farm mentally and you don't, you're not, a, you're, you're not ready to jump over the fence and be the black sheep because you're scared. And if you're, if you're full of fear after so long, right, you become inferior and you have an inferiority complex and everything is little and you're always talking disagreeable about everything. And even if you, you know, you actually see some success, you'll go back and erase it and go back to what you used to do. You're always backsliding because you're not ready to go through it all. Now, if you're ready to go through it and you realize it's going to be storms, it's going to be wind, there's going to be, you may, I mean, there's so many things. When I was doing my first cleanse, do you know how much pain I was in? The griping in my belly. Hmm. Do you know what it took? But see, I had something happen to me. They told me I was about to die. So hmm. I had a different, you know, I had a different goal here. I, I would like to live. And when they tell you something like that, all of a sudden, well, okay, now, wait a minute now. If I eat one more chicken wing, because I had my quota. So you don't know what your quota is of a certain food. Mm -hmm. If you knew your quota, you can only eat 7,542,000 chicken wings. If you eat one more, it could take you out. If you knew that. Mm. But you don't. My point here is that you will be tested. 
You must go through hormesis to get to the other level. Otherwise, it's not real. It's the metaverse. It's the messiverse. You are domesticated and you won't, you won't, you're not ready to break through the dome. I went it's off on a tangent. I'm it's powerful back. stuff. And it's powerful stuff, Doc. I'm not telling people don't eat chicken uh -huh. either. So you eat what you like. Don't don't listen to Doc. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm telling you what I do. Right. No, that's, that was a powerful story right there, Doc. I want to um take a few questions before we get out of here, Doc. So I'm gonna add, if you got questions in the chat, you could post it. We just doing a few. Um, uh, um, we got about 20 more minutes left, so uh, Doc's gonna give a brief answer, and we're gonna keep it moving. Uh, Doc, I want to make an announcement real quick. Um, we got over 2,000 people in the chat. I uh, want to let y'all know for everybody in Atlanta. I want all y'all to come out here, even if you're not from Atlanta. March 9th. March 9th is going down in Atlanta. Uh, me and Cambada are finally re finally releasing the um, the album Holy Ghost 3 to streaming platforms. And we're celebrating because we're talking about celebrating your life. We're having a Holy Ghost 3 theme party at um, a spot in Atlanta called Industry ATL. It's going to be off the hook. I want all of y'all to come out there. It's going to be uh, food, fun, um, dancing. Um, what's going to be amazing is Dr. B actually, it's from, um, it's from eight to one in the morning. We're going to be playing tracks from all three of the Holy Ghost albums, as well as other music as well. But we're going to be playing tracks from all three Holy Ghost albums. Um, what's amazing is that for about 30 minutes, uh, Dr. B uh, is going to do what we're calling a golden age music uh, ritual. I guess we guess we could call it that. And we're going to open up the night with that. And it's going to be a powerful ceremony. It's like a golden age music ceremony. We, 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 we might name it ceremonies. Ritual might scare people. But uh, let's say a golden age music ceremony where he's going to be uh, playing drums and He's going to go in for about 30 minutes and tap into some deep, deep frequencies, deep cymatic frequencies. And we're going to get the party started with Dr. B for about a half an hour. And uh, then we're going to have fun the rest of the night. So I want all of y'all to come out. This is March 9th, family. The, the door tickets, tickets will be sold at the door. We, I might do advanced tickets as well, but tickets will only be about $20. It'll, so it'll only be about $20 or some 20, 30, something like that. But um, I want all y'all to come out. Dr. B is going to be there, Red, Blue, KT. Uh, it's going to be a lot of conscious people, the speakers you see on the channel that will be there, that will be present. Um, but, yeah, if you're in Atlanta, I see a couple of y'all saying y'all coming out. If you're in Atlanta, even if you're not in Atlanta, March 9th is going down. I'm, I'm, I will have a flyer soon. Uh, I'm going to be promoting it real soon. So, yeah, make sure y'all shout out to Boss Life. Boss Life said. She's coming out. I look forward to seeing you there, Bo Boss Life, everybody else. But Dr. B, man, what me and you talked about in this music ceremony that you're doing uh, uh, with the drumming and the, and the chanting and everything else, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And I want to thank you for participating in this grand moment of celebration with the brother Mia Cambada as we embark on this golden age of music worldwide, uh, Dr. B, because we're definitely going to change the frequency. I appreciate all your help, my brother. Thank you so much. Well, I'm glad to come out and assist and share with, yeah. uh, you know, some of this vibration that's happening right now. We yeah. are going through a serious metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I guess this would be a good segue to get into this next piece. Mm -hmm. Metamorphosis is a very science for a little time for a long time couldn't they couldn't get their head around how the caterpillar could become a butterfly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not have the same dna you know they're not related the caterpillar actually dies in the cocoon and later on comes back to life, or not back to life, a new life emerges as the butterfly. Mm -hmm. Butterfly flies where it pleases and pleases where it flies. 
there's something called the butterfly effect. And this concept was laughed at at first, where somebody came up with the theory that a butterfly could fly its wings, one butterfly, mm -hmm. and create a storm, a typhoon, or an earthquake, or a huge event all the way around the world. They laughed at this guy. Hmm. Then the studies of quantum physics arose. And we realized that the quantum particle is only one. There's only one little particle that makes up everything. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the particle, this one small little thing, it affects everything and is everything which has a lot to do with what we're looking at, what we're seeing, what our perception is creating, because we're creating with our perception. The world is not the same for everybody. A right. strawberry does not taste the same. In fact, no two people have the same taste buds. Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. two people have the same eyes, the same ears. No two snowflakes are the same. Mm -hmm. These little small events, like the butterfly flapping its wings at a certain frequency, can affect the whole world. They realized after they got deep into the quantum sciences that this is a fact. Mm -hmm. That what you do, how you live, no matter how small and contained you think your world and your idea is, you affect everything. When you get this, and you realize that you need to flap your wings at a certain frequency mm -hmm. and not think that you are alone and by yourself and you don't matter. You do matter. Everything is matter. Everything is made of matter. And what, what you think matters, what your, your quantum, the waves that come from your brain hit the quantum field. And after a while, that repetition causes the waves to collapse into matter. Mm -hmm. What you say matters. How you talk matters. That's why we're doing this class. This class is so important. There's never been anything like this. This is, you know, God power left us in a very special place. The whole God power event. If you haven't taken it, you still can. It's on some of our sites. The next section in between, because we're going to be doing another God power. I don't care what you say, Brother Rich. We're doing God power three. <laughs> we doing it all right me and billy done talked about we doing it now you down or what <laughs> can't leave the people just hanging but between that there's some pieces that need to be covered the soulful science because a lot of science don't have no soul mm. a lot of science is some stuff that some people put together that's very analytical that's supposed to prove something but nothing in science is actually truly provable because what just because it happened three times the same way you're going to say it's a law it's an act. It's the difference between a law and an act. We think we know what the sun is made out of. No, we know exactly. Have you been to the sun? You tell me somebody been to the sun and came back and tell me what it's made out of. Well, it's a plasma energy and what it is. And it's one day it will burn out. How you know the sun going to burn out? How you know everybody came from the same place in Africa from, from Lucy? Did they find the original human Lucy in Old of I Gorge? They dug one hole. They dug one hole didn't dig in my backyard how you know the original human ain't out in my backyard right now and who is the original human mm. what is human what does that mean see these are all concepts if we came here as mycelium we're part of the mycelium network 65 percent of our dna is what mushroom we're related more to them than anything else but you don't want to get into that because that gets a little deep my point is that most most of what you know is based on somebody else's theories the, a lot of times the series and the science that we're getting is a Western mindset, which has no soul in it. It has no real, real soul, no feeling in it because it's been sliced up and they say for it to be science, you got to take all the feeling out of it. You got to take all the emotion out of it, all the philosophies. What? Mm. For it to be real, for it to be science. And, you know, the science, they draw these graphs. Once you see them graphs, your mind, but the cognitive dissonance kicks in and you think you know what you're seeing. And they drew it on a graph. Well, the science says, what the science? Science ain't said nothing. Science don't speak. The scientists are people who make stuff up. And it's based on a theory. A lot of us here are scientists right now.
We're making this thing up where this is like a huge hologram that we're creating. This is a, a huge, well, it's, it's, just, it's a holographic universe. We're creating this. So we're saying we got to put some soul back into science. We got to put love back into it. We got to feel something again. So our class is called the Soulful Science of Change. Change, like we say, metamorphosis, going through the, the, the shifts that actually create the next level of our ascension. And metamorphosis, we've got to go from being the caterpillar. You know, all the caterpillar does is eat. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. Don't have no reproductive organs, no fun, no orgasms, nothing. It just eats. It even eats at night. And they eat to a point, right, where they start eating themselves to death. Inside the caterpillar are little teeny things that are right around the DNA. They look like little flying saucers. They look like mm. little ships, little planes. Mm. They're called imaginal cells. Now, they've been in a quiet state. They have not been moving in the life of the caterpillar. They look like just little particles. As the caterpillar begins to decline, all of a sudden, the imaginal cells come alive. And they become active. They begin to move. And the imaginal cells begin to collect. They have this, this energy that, you know, this, this, this energy that pulls them together. They have this thing that creates the gluon state where they begin to stick together like Legos. And they're building and building something, right? And the, 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 the caterpillar's body, the immune system, doesn't recognize these new things. So even though the caterpillar is dying on its last breath, it's trying to, its immune system is trying to attack these imaginal cells. Some of the imaginal cells don't make it, but they keep clumping together because they have a telos. They know what they got to do. They are, they're on a mission, right? No matter what happens, no matter what rain, no matter what storm, no matter what war goes on, guess what? The imaginal cells are focusing on ascension. Finally, what happens is, is the caterpillar makes the cocoon which is a chrysalis, which is a crystal cave. And inside that cocoon, it's very dark. It's a cave, a crystal cave where the caterpillar dies on the cross. And it's usually in a cross, right? A crawl space or a place in between two sticks. It dies on the stem. It dies on the, on, uh, under a leaf. And in that cocoon, the imaginal cells begin to create something new. Guess what the first thing they create? The first thing the imaginal cells create in the cocoon are the antennae, the antenna. Why? Because the first thing the cat, the, the, the butterfly is going to need is a message. From the message, it's going to know what it should be. It needs to be able to tap into the cosmos, like your hair, right? Their antenna, right? You need to be getting a message. A lot of people can't get a clear message because of what they done did to their hair and their scalp and all that kind of stuff, trying to look like something, trying to be somebody else. Your hair reaches up because it's antennas, right? That message begins to tell the imaginal cells what it's creating. It's creating a butterfly. The imaginal cells actually take the goop and the dead material of the caterpillar and create the butterfly. Now the butterfly, when it's whole, when it's got its wings, it looks beautiful, right? Each wing looks exactly the same, which is part of the mirroring effect, the butterfly effect. When that rhythm is right, when the frequency is right, it begins to eat its way. It has an enzyme that it emits from its mouth that eats its way out of the cocoon. Mm -hmm. As it eats its way out, it's strengthening, it, strengthening itself. When it emerges, it is not related to the caterpillar. It flies where it pleases and pleases where it flies. Now check this out. Did you know that human beings have imaginal cells too. Mm. Did you know that when you go through hormesis, when you go through the test and the trial, based on what you're imagining, mm -hmm. 
The imaginal cells in you will move towards that destination, that telos that you are focusing on. If you're focusing on disagreeable information and being mad and angry and living in the past, you will create that. Now you become a creature. Mm. You remember those movies, the creature features? Yeah. A lot of people have <clears throat> become like creatures because that's what they imagine and they weren't taught or they haven't been to this place where they can learn the soulful science of changing the metamorphosis. That's why we're teaching the class. And this is a real class. You're going to need to get your books and your tablets. This is, you're not just going to sit there and just look, get you know egotistically, consciously deep. Because right. we're going to take you through some trials and some tribulations. Right. But the butterfly, its wings flapping changes everything. Your mouth, when it's flapping, changes everything. What you say. You want to know, well, the weather's getting worse and worse. Have you noticed? Well, the weather of people, right? Whether you know it or not, your mouth, your actions, what you're eating, how you're acting, what you're wearing, who you think you are, your ego is affecting the weather on the planet. Mm, it's mm, just not mm. getting worse. You mm. figure it's God. Well, God is the collection of all of us as one. Whew. Doc, what you on tonight, Doc? Damn that it, is the man. collection of all of us. God is a collection Damn of it, things man. that have creating the whole. It's holism. But you got a hole in your head because somebody shot a hole in your head and you're not ready to repair that. You're not ready to be like, you know, a self-replicating being like certain reptilians and certain animals can grow a new arm. You could, too, if you could get your mind out your ass. Whew. This is what you're going to have to do. <laughs> But a lot of folks, because we're caught and we're stuck on stupid and we're stuck on the past and we're still mad and angry and we can't get rid of this victimhood. I got one more story for you. <laughs> the dragonfly. Now, you know, we're in the year of the dragon. Yes. This, this, when I, when I saw this, it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. The Chinese calendar, Chinese horoscope, whatever they call it. Zodiac. The last year, Zodiac. Yeah. Which means circle of animals. Mm -hmm. Says that last year was the year of the rabbit, I believe. Yeah. And it was about jumping around, doing a lot of stuff, making a lot of stuff. Because, you know, rabbits are rabbits. You know, they do a lot of sexual things to make a lot more of themselves. And they're always jumping around, <laughs> doing a lot, gathering. This year, they said it's the wood dragon. The dragon brings about change and transmutation. Mm -hmm. The dragon breathes fire. The fire-breathing dragon. You know who that is? That's us. Mm. I was just talking to somebody who's in Southeast Asia, and they were saying that they call in, I think it's the... Um, Polynesia, they call the dragon Naga. And my friend said, Naga, the Nagas are the black folks. And this person who was talking says, Yes, exactly. You're the dragon people. Mm. Now, you, we, we, some people, well, now, we Anunnaki's. And well, I, I, you know, that's real, that's real funny, them stories right there. They get real twisted up. Nobody knows for sure. The bottom line is that you should be breathing fire. You should have fire breath. Your words should be on fire or mm. you're quiet. You should mm. be silent. You need to learn how to control your mouth because either you're breathing fire, right? Or you got your desires out front and you're focusing on what it is you like and what you would like to be. Instead of burning everything alive, you got to be able to control the fire. Mm. Fire has a lot to do with passion and desire. Mm -hmm. What are you passionate about? That should be your fire. Mm. It's a certain breathing. That's called fire breath. Mm -hmm. That trip that warms up your triple heater in your gut, your solar plexus. So now that you have a lot of sun, that solar plexus is the sun within you. You are doing like what you do when you blow a fire. You're turning up the heat within you to move towards your goal and your desires. This is the year. This is what they say. Real. This is the real quick thing they say on the Internet. What does the year of the wood dragon mean? The Chinese horoscope for 2024 foretells, foretells, huh? A year of prosperity for the dragon. Who's the dragon? You. Symbolizing authority. 
Did you hear what they just said? Now, mm. you know, a lot of times you got to get authorized. <laughs> Who's authorizing you? Who's giving you your authority? Have you given up your authority? Do you need to call your friends and have them, you know, agree with what you're doing? That's no authority. A lot of people need to be validated by others. They need a, a certificate. They got to go to the wizard to get a piece of paper, right, on a dead sheepskin to give them authority so they can get some letters behind their name so they feel like they're somebody, right? Instead of being an authorizing yourself and having a brand new ID. A lot of people lost their ID, had their ID stolen, and they don't even understand what the id is when you talk about, you know, psychology, your original root self. So a lot of folks need a new certificate in this class. When you take the three parts of this class that we have coming up, you will receive a rebirth. Guaranteed. You're going to get it. It's going to be a document. I don't want to tell you exactly what it's called, but you're going to receive a document that you can put on your wall. And whenever you see that, the symbols on it and the energy of what it represents says, I am new. A lot of times you don't have anything to show for being new. Your authority is who you are. A lot of who you are is not who you are. It's who you've agreed to be. It's your what? It's the stuff they told you. Their references and labels, but that's not who you really are. Who you really are, you're going to have to experience that as a referent. There's a difference between a reference, a referent, and a label. This is the time of abundance. To take little, to do a... To, to, see... If you can maximize the minimum, you got power. You got 50 cents? We can show you how to turn that 50 cents into $5,000. We do it all the time. Brother Rich is doing it right now. He took whatever he had. I heard he was standing on the corner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> King Simon told me they used to stand on the corner. It would be cold. They had gloves with the fingers out. He's playing <laughs> keyboards. I heard the stories. Uh, I love how y'all how y'all framed that. Just standing on the corner. <laughs> y'all stand on the corner. Y'all had CDs. Y'all was selling was, uh, DVDs. Somebody was, said, "Well, that was VHSs." But you had your keyboard. They said wherever you went, you had a keyboard with you. I don't know how true this is, but whatever it is, you took the little bit you had to make a lot. Now you're one of the top people in this whole YouTube situation. You're to be respected all over the world, but you started with a little bit. You just didn't pop up with a silver spoon in your mouth. And what does that mean anyway, a silver spoon in your mouth? I don't even know. Is that healthy to have a silver spoon? Maybe it is. But anyway, mm -hmm. my point is you got to be able to what? Take the little bit you have and make a lot. That means you got to be focused on a goal and you got to be what? Always energizing your goal and get out of other people's lanes and get out of other people's business and close your mouth sometime. Learn how to say when and when to say how. No when and no win and when to know not to be winning. And know that sometimes you don't need to win to actually get to where you go. You got to let some things go. You mm -hmm. might need to take a loss to get ahead. Now, let's keep going. I'm, I'm almost done. It's a year of prosperity, if you say so. It symbolizes authority, abundance, and good fortune. Fortune, fortune. What the heck does that mean? That doesn't mean luck. Anybody said it was the luck of the Irish? Do, are, were the Irish lucky? They keep hearing about that. I don't know. Some of these stories don't sound too lucky. But anyway, what is fortune? That means you're tuned up. You're focused. You're in oneness. You're attuned. You're, you're atoned. You're on the right frequency moving towards your goal. You're fortuned because you are feeling it. Right, hearing it and seeing it before it happens is on the event horizon. You are attracting it because you become magnetically connected to that thing. You now are in the gluon state where you are moving towards all the things you desire, even though you're being tested. You will be tested, but you got to have good fortune. Good fortune does not mean good luck. It means that you're able to focus closely on what it is you desire and you might need to tune up and readjust and reevaluate things every single day because 90% of your journey will be course correction. 90% of everybody's journey is course correction. You're on an airplane. 90% of, of that journey is course correction. You're in an automobile. 90% of that journey is on course correction. You've got to be dialing in every day, like mixing a record, remixing your life every day. And not just think because you're drinking, you know, you alkaline and all of a sudden you think you got this. 
Because you got your hair locked up. You think you got this. No, you got to re you got to readjust everything every single day. The wood dragon has the influence of evolution on your life. We are evolving, improving, and we're looking towards abundance because we're creating it in our mindset. Now, I got to connect this that I'm done. Why is it that if you read the book, The Gene Keys, and you go to Gene Key 55, which I, I you really, this is really deep. Gene Key 55 is called The Dragonfly's Dream. It says that we're in the time right now of the dragonfly. The Chinese zodiac says we're in the wood dragon year. The genes, which has to do with the way your genes are encoded, says that we're in the mode of the dragonfly. If you look outside, if you, you know, in the fall and even in the spring, you're gonna see so many dragonflies more than ever. People have been noticing them. What is the dragonfly all about? Transmutation. Because the dragonfly starts out as a nymph in the swamp. It's hungry. It eats everything. It'll even eat dirt, leaves, anything moving or not moving. It just eats, eats and eats. It don't have sex. It don't have no reproductive organs, just like the, just like the caterpillar. And then all of a sudden, oh, and the other thing about the, the, the nymph, it's a victim and a victimizer because everything's attempting to eat it. Everything's attempting to attack it. It's tested every single day. That's why there's so many nymphs. You go under the ocean, under, under the sw swamp, these little things are everywhere. So that a few might make it. And what happens is after the nymph goes through a certain amount of, of stress and it's eaten and eaten and eaten, guess what? The imaginal cells inside the dragonfly turn on. The dragonfly is triggered and climbs up a reed or a stick. And when it gets out of the water for the first time, it can see the world outside of the water. Now, the water is murky. The water represents fear. It represents victimhood. It represents fight, flight, or fawn, which is a whole other thing we could talk about. Fawn syndrome is a whole deep thing. Maybe we'll touch on that before we go. We did, Remind me to talk on that real quick because I'll, 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 I'll lock it up quick, Brother Rich. I know you got to go. When the nymph lungs for the first time fill with air, it changes. Its body cracks open. The sun hits its body. The shell falls away because it's got this protective coating, which is like kind of like a shell, kind of like the shrimps and the other bottom feeders, the, you know, I won't go there. And for the first time, it sees the world and is breathing air outside of the drama of the water. Its wings are crumpled up. Its body is full of the water. It uses these hydraulic pumps and it pumps the water into its wings, the water of drama, the water of pain, of trial and tribulation and victimhood. It pumps that water into its wings, Brother Rich. Its wings expand and then the sun hits its wings and evaporates the water. And the wings turn into like solar panels. That's why you see those colors. And now all of a sudden, the dragonfly, it flies. Do you know what dragonflies do for two weeks or two and a half weeks that they live? All they do is have sex. They don't do nothing else. They eat and get busy. In fact, most of the things in nature, that's all they do. That's all most of nature is doing. Eating and reproducing and having fun doing it. It's only humans that got a lot of other stuff in between. We won't go there on this particular program. One day we'll talk about that. Mm. the dragonflies, when they come together in intimacy, they make a heart. They're lovers. They have taken 
the waters of victimhood and pain and trial and tribulation and used it as what? The energy that motivates them that they use to fly on. That becomes the wind under their wings. They are actually sig signaling love and harmony. They're lovers. And everywhere they go, they bring love. The dragonfly. Dragons that fly. This may be where the whole concept of the dragons flying, that in ancient times, we see these big monsters. Well, if you look at them and blow it up with a microscope, you'll see these things look just like them in a way. We are going through this transmutation at this time, like the dragonfly goes through transmutation. We are going through the transmutation right now. The past right now is going to affect you only if it's in your mind. So our thing is to move away from that and go through the metamorphosis of change. So there's certain things and certain things that we're going to have to use to actually grow. It's not going to be easy. It is not easy because that dragonfly had to go through a lot to become a dragonfly. We're in the period right now where the histidine, which is the uh, 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 histidine is one of your, uh, 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 let's call it amino acid. Histidine has to do with every function of your body. Everything, nothing happens. You can't, you, the egg cannot meet the sperm and the sperm can't meet the egg without histidine. Everything in the body needs histidine. But guess what? Histidine has a partner that protects it. It's called histamine. When you go through a histamine response, that's when you're sneezing, when you have arthritis, you have sometimes heart disease and cancer. All these things are inflammation caused by your body trying to fight or trying to balance itself or go to a homeo state of homeostasis based on dis-ease. This is why a lot of people have mucus. Mucus, to, in, my, in my research, mucus is not causing disease. Mucus is trying to save you from the disease, whatever the root of the disease is. The mucus is there trying to pull that stuff out of you or cover up the area and protect it. Now, it is a symbol or it is a symptom, but it may not be what's causing the disease. You got to get to the root of it. And the root of it is what we're eating, how we're talking, how we're acting, who we're hanging with, who we're making love with, who we're in anger with, who we're fighting all the time. Are we in war? Are we warshipping? Huh? Warship means to be on a warship. When you go to work, you know, don't go to work anymore. Don't call it work. Call it play. Call it something else. Because as soon as you say work, your immune system goes into what? Victimhood. I hate my job. I don't like to go to work. See, now you're a victim again. Now you're back down in the water like the nymph. You got to get rid of the waters, right, of, 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 of victimhood to go to the next level. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to rise? Then make sure you're in this class on Saturday. Whatever you got to do, get in the class. Tomorrow night, we're going to have this workshop free. Well, it's actually a webinar free. I'm going to talk a bit about the class, but we're going to talk about some insights that are coming through that we don't have enough time to talk about today. This is the time to really spread the good news because it is here. There's so many amazing things happening. While your your leaders are fighting with each other, a lot of the folks that we call leaders, they got war going on. They, you know, you got to pick between, you know, the they talking about the, the lesser of two evils. I'm not doing that. I'm voting for me. You better vote for yourself. You got to be a little selfish, self-caring, take care of yourself, and what invest time in increasing your butterfly wing spread. Flap your wings because your wings. Your actions huh, are what's going to carry you to the next level. huh? And what you do and what you say is you flapping your wings. huh? And that wing, right, the left wing is sending information on one side and the right wing is sending information on the other side. When they come together, you have oneness. When you take yourself and realize that you're connected to everybody, nothing is separate. Nothing is separate. Nothing is by chance. It's not just happening. You are the happening. We are the happening. Once we come together and get out of me-ism and get into we-ism, we realize that we affect everything. That butterfly flapping its wings can affect a storm or create love and harmony on the other side of the world. Guess what? You got wings too. You have imaginal cells too. Once you're ready to really do this and get out of the language of struggle and the language of pain and the language of victimhood. Oh my gosh. I mean, we know everybody's got trauma. I don't know anybody that don't have no trauma. That's a part of the system. That's a part of hormesis. Let's use that drama and that trauma, right? And let's compost it just like you do in the garden, right? 
And when you get to that certain level of composting enough of it, you'll be begin to see the evidence. A lot of this class that we're going to teach is going to be about the, ret the reticular activating system. How to create something out of nothing. How to turn things into gold. How to turn water into wine. Are you ready to do that? Then come with us. So that class is this Saturday. That's going to be this Saturday at a, a 10 a.m. I think I said 11 early. It's actually 10 a.m. Go to elevationtime.com. I actually put the class up so that you can go there and actually join the class now and be early because there's going to be a lot of folks on this one because everyone's waiting for this because this is the time period that we heard about. When we're supposed to go through the evolutionary period that the butterfly went, that the caterpillar went through to become the butterfly and that the nymph went through to become the dragonfly. That's happening in all of us. And that histidine is a part of what creates the process of, ch of change. Histidine. Check out Gene Key 55. And tomorrow night, the free webcast, elevationtime.com. You know, go there, go to events. You'll see both of these events. And, um, you know, make sure you're there and on time. And tomorrow we start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's time to rise. Are you ready? Are you willing? Are you able or do you like where you're at? If you like it, if you got it, we're not saying everybody needs to jump on board the boat. Do what you like. Be free. But if you feel this, if you feel the Dr. B passion, because I'm passionate. Have you noticed? I'm extremely passionate about what I'm saying. I promised myself when I was going through my illness and all my changes, I told the most high and the creator, I said, look, if, 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 you, if you help me live through this for the rest of my life, I will donate my time to make great music and to help people heal with my words. I will offer the good news to the people, the truth, without the lie. Not mm. just the, you know, the analogies you get in some of these holy books, but some of the things that I've seen and I've done, right, that I've been a part of, I, I, I'd like to share them. Dr. Mahdi, who's going to be on the class on Saturday for the next three classes. This dude's been through some stuff, man. When you hear what he's been through, and what he knows and what he's had to overcome. Are you ready to overcome and rise? Are you ready to be like Brother Rich and start out on the corner? I know it must have been cold out there, brother, in the winter. Was you out there cold sometime and having to blow on your fingers to keep them warm? To keep freezing. your fingers freezing. 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 But you stayed out there, didn't you? I, I bought uh, hand warmers and the foot warmers to put in my foot, but it was so cold, those didn't work either. But you went through that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. look frozen now. It didn't no. stop you. No. no. It didn't stop you. Why? Because there was something in you. When your mother and father got together, right, that particular time, no matter what we think about our parents, to be a winner, right, you got to know that there was a winning egg and a winning sperm that came together that had to what? Create you. We were all <clears throat> created as winners. But the challenge, that's what creates masters, to win each day, to mm. win yourself, to deal with the what? The opposition, mm. to go through the, the, the oppression and rise from that, to go through whatever we got to go through. Are you ready to do that? If not, it's okay. You got to go through the cold like Brother Rich had to do. And most of the people I know who are really good at what they do. They went through a lot, even if it was just in college, up all night doing those tests and those exams with the, with the seemed like your professor hated you. That was the best professor. Your family's going to test you. They're going to tell you you done lost your mind. The church is going to mess with you. Your friends, you're going to find out that they only your friends if you agree with them. And if you're moving away from the candy counter, all of a sudden they look at you crazy. You've got to be ready to walk it alone sometimes. You got to be ready to what? Break the spell. If that is you, if you hear this message, if this is something that is reaching you, then let's go. Let's go. Let's go through the transmutation. Whoo! Want to want to give a shout out to uh Kimberly with all the super chat love. A lot of super chat love tonight. Shout out to everybody. A lot of super chat love in general tonight. I want to thank everybody who donated. Mr. West Kimberly Greg Scott, um, Keisha, um, I'm trying to, yeah, they won't let me see the rest of the names, but shout out to everybody who contributed 
on the uh, super chat is definitely greatly appreciated. I want all y'all to make sure y'all go to Dr. B's um, workshop happening. Uh, we won't do Q and A tonight. Dr. B went over. I gotta uh, get out of here, family. I got. Oh, by the way, everybody who's here, we still got two thousand people here. I got Dr. Phil Valentine on tomorrow night. So tomorrow night at nine, Dr. Phil Valentine will be live with us. You know, he got his workshop coming up. So he's going to do a live Q&A. Last time he was here, I didn't get to do a live Q&A with the people. So I told the people that and then when he comes back, we're going to do um, uh, a, a live Q&A. So, yeah, definitely, definitely going to love it. And Dr. B, I, you know, sometimes I forget about my um, what I've been through to get to where I'm at. You know, um, and when you remind me, I'm like, damn, yeah, I did go through that. I appreciate the, you know, the consistency. You know, there's one thing, Dr. B, if, if there's one thing I want the people to know, Dr. B, you know, you don't have to agree with everything Brother Rich says or everything Brother Rich do or every decision I make. Those decisions and all that comes from me and I'm, you know, and I'm standing on it. I just will always want the people to know when it comes to this here, I, I, gave, I gave it my all. I gave this shit my all, Dr. B. Okay, you got you got my lady, you got my son, my family. I gave I gave this shit my all, Doctor B. I gave I gave it everything I got. So, you know, regardless of how you feel about me, know that brother Rich, I, I gave this shit all I got. So if this was my assignment, then you know they they looking down at me like, yeah, that nigga gave all he gave it all my I gave it all my I I, I got Doctor B gave it all I got. So I appreciate the journey. This 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 this. Let me say this because I know this talk tonight. I mean, two out. It's hard to get two hours of pure electricity. And that was what, I remember one day I just sat there and I was like, I gotta do something with Dr. B. Cause I'm a passionate dude, he's passionate. Billy has his own version of passion. And I'm like, imagine if all three of us got together and put together, that would, I was like, the world never seen nothing like that. Because I'm judging by all our different forms of passion. And boy, oh boy, we shocked the world in 2023 where Blueprint for God Power Family, like one of the biggest events to ever hit the, you know, this whole conscious thing um, on the internet. And it was amazing. I was glad to be a part of it with you, Dr. B. So I want everybody, I look forward to part three. We're going to do so. We're going to do something in person. I think that's coming in 2025. We got to talk, but we'll figure it out. But other than that, Dr. B, oh, one thing I wanted to say, um, this is completely, this is completely off topic, but I just want to ask this, Dr. B. Somebody uh, posted this. I, I believe this is Chinese. What a beautiful language. Completely off topic, but I'm just curious. And I, you know, this is my show, so I'm allowed to ask shit like this. What do you think is the most beautiful language, Dr. B? There's some beautiful language that just, just by appearance, you got Hebrew, you got Chinese, you got um, Mandarin, you got Latin, you got um, English. You got Spanish. There's so many beautiful languages when you just look at how it's written, how, how it looks. What do you think is the most, because this is beautiful. When you look at this right here, what do you think is the most beautiful language, Dr. B? Silence. Oh, come on. <laughs> this nigga says silence. Come on. What this? Y'all, come on now, y'all. When y'all going to get a show like this, y'all? Come, come on. Come on, man. Look at that look. He's like, come on, man. Oh, man. That was a perfect answer, Dr. B. Silence is the most amazing, wonderful language. Silence. Shit. Silence is golden. Loose lips sink ships. Telepathy. Loose lips sink ships. Whoa. Think Man. about that. Yeah. We talk so way too much. We talk too much, right? I know I do, but I'm attempting to wake folks up so we can get silent. Yeah. And when you're silent, and when you start realizing that telepathy is real, mm -hmm. you can begin to feel the thoughts of others. Yo. See, there is something happening in the mycelium network. You can't hear it, mm. but it is the communication factor of all of the earth, the soil, the trees are all communicating in what we think is silence. They don't talk. Besides, mm -hmm. what was that? I think there was was the trees and Wizard of Oz talking, the ones that was throwing the apples. That's all television. Mm -hmm. But being able to be silent and be quiet sometimes. There are times I don't say much of anything. There's times when I'm doing music, I'm totally silent. I'm letting my expression express itself. 
The trees are always expressing themselves. The squirrels who are outside in the sub freezing weather, they're always expressing themselves. Soon it will be spring. I could smell spring. People were saying, well, the groundhog. What the heck the groundhog got to do with seeing the shadow? I mean, you caught up in this. He the groundhog. How you know what, what the groundhog saw? Who created that? And we're with that. You see what I'm saying? Oh, boy, the groundhog yeah. saw his shadow. Well, what about the turtle? Did he see his shadow? Did the frog see his shadow? Did the hawk see their shadow? See, it's these concepts and these beliefs that we get caught up in, these fairy tales that get you caught up in nothingness. My point is, is if you watch nature, follow nature. Nature follows the path of least resistance. Mm. It, water doesn't it's not attempt to go uphill. Mm. When you realize that nature is always expressing itself differently, it's like jazz, it's improvisation. And you begin to live like that. You begin to move like that. And you begin to change your story. People ask me, well, Dr. B, you remember you, when you was on Brother Richard's show the first time, remember you was talking about, and I said, wait, hold on. I don't even remember Steve. being on his show the first time and what I talked about. I have no idea. I'm not that guy. I'm not him. I might not even agree with some of the stuff he said. That dude's crazy. Somebody was playing in the background one of my one of my talks while we were talking. They, were, they had me playing in the background. I said, well, well can I, let me hear that guy. And I'm listening. I said, that dude is crazy. What the hell? Where's he coming from? That's not me. I can't take ownership for that. It's a we thing. It's coming through me. Nature is channeling the cosmos. When we become channels, we become clear channel to the cosmos by creating heaven on earth. That's when we got this. But some folks got to leave and come back again and again and again and go through the Thunderdome and go through all this change and shift to finally get it. Because what we're doing is we're being tested. We've got to augment. We've got to change. And if you stay the way you were, you'll never grow. There is no perfection. Nobody is actually totally 100% right. Hmm. Everybody's having their own expression in their own story within the cosmos. Each one of us is an expression of the all. Be hmm. yourself. Be loving. Mm -hmm. Be that now. Elevate your life now. Be, do, have. Have, do, be. Whatever way you want to do it. But you have to get there in the way that you need to get there. Nobody can stop you. But always expand. Always be ready to shift to be able to go through the levels of ascension. And it's a change now. So the rules have changed. So that's what we're going to be talking about on Saturday in that class. I'm going to touch on it a little bit tomorrow night in our free webinar. ElevationTime.com, y'all. ElevationTime.com. And also get rid of your parasites. Mm. If you've got mental, physical, and spiritual parasites, guess what? And that's why we created the Elevated Total Body Program, which is at ElevationTime.com which mm -hmm. I hear now is the number one systemic parasite cleanse probably on the earth. We can't say every, could we, some stuff we don't know about, but that is not dealing with your regular colon parasites and the ones in your digestive tract. It's dealing with the systemic ones, especially the ones called toxoplasma. Some people have anthrax. Some people have with the chicken pox virus in their body, which they right. call herpes. That's a lot of stuff that people have. And what we're doing is we're creating balance in the body and homeostasis by giving the body what the, what nutrients it needs to balance itself, to atone, to tune up. So the Elevated Total Body Program is on the website for those of you who would like to get rid of the parasites of the past and ideas and feelings and emotions and the sugar cravings. Because that, that one little molecule of sugar, man, as soon as it touches that processed sugar, shuts down all your connective to spirituality. I don't care what you say, because a lot of folks is faking it. They're talking soft. Yeah, I'm so spiritual. It's talk. I can tell the way you're walking and the way you're moving and the way you're acting. If you're mm. connected, you're spiritual, you're not doing the same thing over and over. Spirituality means to change and grow and to expand. So if mm. you're doing the same thing, you got the same crystals, the same talk, then that's not spirituality. That's some sort of ritual. That's some sort of, you know, whatever it is. It's, it's a habit. But to mm -hmm. change and grow is what we have to do to transmute, to change. So I'm thankful for you, Brother Rich, and uh, all that you bring, and um, Billy Carson and Elizabeth Carson and, you know, uh, uh, Kyle Nelson, you know, who actually 
brought me into the the public view Kyle Nelson in 1994 in in uh brother Jamal that you know on the front page show that's when it all started that's when I did, when I went public mm. and all the folks who I've you know talked to you know mm. worked with all of you who have been followers and leaders who have learned in our classes and workshops those of you who have assisted me those of you who have tested me I would like to even thank my enemies thank you because mm. you tested me the dude who punched me in my mouth in, 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 in junior high and made my mouth bleed. Thank mm. you for punching me in my mouth. I needed to get punched in my mouth because that's when I learned how to defend myself. Mm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So everything that has happened, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the parents. I'm grateful for the friends. I'm grateful for all the for, grateful to all the people who help out here at Elevation and everybody who is an herbalist or a teacher or a metaphysician. I'm grateful. Let's all give each other a hand. Let's work together. Let's mm. stop talking about each other. Let's stop gossiping mm. and pointing the mm. finger because that is the disease. That is narcissism. Mm. You don't know what I do. Don't be mm. you, people got gossiping. Well, Dr. B, we heard you don't know me. I don't even know myself today. Mm. People say, Well, Dr. B, what's that color you wearing? I saw somebody say, That's a what color? Where'd you get that shirt? I don't know. I found it in my closet. Actually, I never even saw it till today. I got a lot, bunch of stuff I've never even looked at because you, so we got a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. I pulled it out and said, Wow, this would be great for the show. I put it on. Then I see you got the teal color, right? You wearing what's, what's that powerful emerald tablets you wearing around your neck? Yeah, yeah, emerald, emerald, yeah. <laughs> Little emerald tablets around your yeah. neck. I know yeah, what's going emerald. on, brother. <laughs> but what, what I'm saying is that there's a, there's a symmetry and there's a flow. Once you get into it, and like Dick Gregory told me, when you get in drama and you're going through a lot, row, row, row your boat. Mm. Gently, Gently down, down the stream. stream. Merrily, 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 mm -hmm. life it is, is but, but a, a dream. dream. It's Beautiful. all in your mind. It's in the metaverse. We are the metaverse. Thank you very much. And I want to like to thank everybody who helps out you know, you and your family and all of us. Let's all give ourselves a round of applause mm -hmm. and let's, what, celebrate being here right now. Once we are able to celebrate being here right now, even though we've been through a lot, as a collective, let's do better. Let's be better. Let's be loving. I'll family, see you soon. Once, family once again. Also, real quick, Dr. B, family, once again, March 9th is going down in ATL. Yes, yes. Um, at Industry. It's, the name of the spot is Industry ATL. I have information about it real soon. Tickets will be sold at the door. I'm going to have tickets, um, advanced tickets as well. We're having a Holy Ghost theme party. We're celebrating all three albums, me and Cambada release. We, uh, Dr. B is going to be opening the show with a drumming ceremony. Well, he's, he's bringing in the golden age with, with uh, an amazing frequency, an amazing sound. Um, red, blue, everybody, everybody's going to be there. I'm going to make sure everybody's there. I'm going to make sure everybody, um, I, 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 I want everybody to have a good time. We're going to celebrate life. It's going to be a wonderful night. Family, I look forward to seeing you on March 9th. Um, make sure y'all go to Dr. B's workshop. We gave y'all two hours. It's 2020. It's 222 right now. We've been on here two hours and 22 minutes of pure electricity. Wasn't a dull moment the whole show. That's hard to accomplish. But that is something that you can accomplish when you come from your heart. We're both two brothers that come straight from our heart. So we gave you two hours and 22 minutes of pure electricity. Dr. B, thank you, my brother. I'm going to call you tomorrow so we can talk about some stuff, my brother. ElevationTime.com, y'all. ElevationTime.com. That's where the events are in the event section at ElevationTime.com. Thank you very much, brother. Travel light. You don't need all that luggage. It's not yours anyway. Peace. Peace, family. See you tomorrow. Dr. Phil Valentine. Peace.